got them pretty, yeah, pretty decently prepared. Ready? Hold on, hold on. She. Okay. All right. That was all right. That was all right. That was a good one. Let's see if they can do it louder. She. All right, Battle of the Titans, an All-American battle. Corvette versus Mustang. Matt Field, your number one qualifier, got that 95 last night. He reigned supreme, and he's feeling cool, calm, and collected. He's feeling a little, uh, little yogi, a little namaste. Namaste right here. He's going to muscle up against Chelsea Denofa. Chelsea, don't call me a girl, Denofa, as I've seen him just progress through the years. He's been campaigning his Ford Mustang for a few years with Von Gittin Jr. He is ready to rock. He's got the hip-hop lid. He's ready to drop some fat rhymes and beats up on you. And talking about Matt Field, that's what he's talking about. So here we go, oh Matt boy. Field. Yeah, this is a good one. These guys, they this is probably two of the like biggest smack talkers. I'm just gonna put it out there. These guys talk smack, wow. but they 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 well they say it lovingly. It's you know what I mean. They 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 both give and receive. You should be a promoter. That's a good way to hype up a battle. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> These are two of the biggest smack, smack talkers in the biz. Matt Field piling that Falcon tires, Drift Cave Corvette. He's going against the BC Racing Neto Tires Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D. Field versus Denofa. Field will lead. Denofa will give chase as they come on down the pipe. Woo wee! That's a stinky initiation coming into that first. Inside clip. Here comes Matt Field. Oh, scrubs some speed, but allows Denofa to straighten out. Oh, gates of ground, banging doors. Oh, man. I tell you what, things got a little interesting there. Talking about that smack talking. Rubbin is racing. Ryan, I really want to look at this. You saw, you saw the attitude of Matt's vehicle when he went up the hill. It looked like he scrubbed some speed. Chelsea got on his door, backed off, but then he just lunged back into it. So uh, let's let's take another look at this, another perspective with that United States Air Force instant replay. Let's get through the replay first, and we'll talk about the momentum zones, one of which is right here after initiation. The drivers in the chase should know that the lead drivers are going to be slowing down. Once they get to that inside clip, they need to be back on the throttle. Matt Field is on the throttle there as Genofa transitions with them at the same time. Super close here, keeping the aggression right to Matt Field's door and then surges forward. And this is where things come unglued for Chelsea Denofa. Let's take a look at Matt Field. He, uh, he unwinds the angle, and he may have sped up there because of that and then was a bit too close and had to make that adjustment. So yeah. the judges have their work cut out for him there. It looks like Matt Field was all in the right in the lead position. Denofa quickly gets back on it, tries to make a fight of it. But from this point forward, Matt Field looks like he has a huge advantage. Here it is again. See, he unwinds it, and he surges there. So do you think it was Chelsea being aggressive? Did Matt have a hiccup? And that, let, let's take a look at that smoke line. I think it'll come into play on the on the replay when you kind of digest both runs. But uh, I'm well, we'll we'll take a yeah. look at the momentum map. But yep. I think Matt Field is in the right there for the most part. See, the momentum map actually goes all the way to the beginning of outside zone yep. number two. So Matt Field was slowing in the right place, and he wasn't really slowing dramatically. I think what happened is Denofa unwound the angle. He sped up and then had to put more angle in it to slow down to avoid a big accident. Here we go. Here we go. Chelsea Denofa, Matt Field in that chase position. Chelsea initiates, yanking that handbrake quite a bit. Comes in, wow. you talk about that momentum zone. Good aggressive driving by Chelsea. Look at the angle from Denofa. Comes into that second outside zone in that keyhole. Look at that absolute sideways positioning of that BC Racing vehicle going for gold. Oh my God. Literally. Holy cow, where'd they go? First you see them, now you don't. All American <laughs> battle. Yo, the old Houdini. That, wow. That, that is Denofa saying, I'm going to do whatever I can to make Matt Woo. Field make an error by putting on massive angle, but not reducing the momentum through sections of the course where that kind of angle for almost any other driver would be a spin or a massive slow. So this is Denofa trying to make it tough on Matt Field. He must know that he's at a disadvantage if he's driving like this. He's really trying to make it hard on Matt. Matt makes some adjustments, has to unwind some angle coming up from outside zone number one into outside zone number two. Now he closes the door as they get to this inside clip, transitioning back around. Matt Field through the smoke line. Being aggressive there, trying to get close to Denofa, but look at the smoke line that Denofa is putting up. He is driving absolutely bonkers, and then a massive angle through the final inside clip. Incredible bit of driving there by Chelsea Denofa, trying to take it to Matt Field here in right. this really tough top 16 battle. Look at that angle through that final inside Love clip it. along with the transition. So Denofa doing everything 
that he has within his power to give Matt Field a tough time. Scores are in, slide him left for Field, right for Denofa, and there it is. That looks like Eggert says Field, as does Ryan Lontane and Chris Yule. It is unanimous, Matt Field. Lontane, you got your headset on there. That was unanimous. What's up? everywhere that we ask them to. We always say if you're gonna try a reverse entry and initiation, it doesn't always work out that well, but he was able to make it to a high degree of angle and stick it all the way through inside clip one. And he threw it in in a very aggressive way at outside zone number two as well into the uh, shoe, uh, horseshoe up here. Maintained it all the way through again, but Matt Field was right there with him. Why we chose Matt Field? Well, Chelsea straightened in his chase position coming up the hill towards outside zone one and two. And you could see when it gripped up right there, it shot him straight up towards Matt. And then uh, he ended up stalling, straightened up a couple of times there and fell off in a pretty big way. So unfortunately, Chelsea uh, had that issue that held him back, but uh, incredible, incredible run from that was awesome. Chelsea on his, uh, on his lead. Yeah, that, and, and, and he knew he had to kind of like throw it down, just break his wrist if his arm wrestling competition in order to get the win, right? Yeah, he probably was hoping either that he would look amazing, which he did, or he would throw off Matt Field in the chase and he would make a mistake, and then they'd at least get it one more time and Chelsea could have a chance to redeem himself. But fortunately, Matt Field did a good job behind him. Um, wasn't able to match the angle. I mean, who can in that yeah. situation? He's uh, maxed in the out. Chase. Yeah, but uh, did a great job of mimicking as best he could the transitions and the, uh, the line. Right on. Thank you, Ryan Lontane. As we move on to our next battle, you can see the headshots there. Kazuya Taguchi, brand new vehicle, and here he is in top 16. He's going against Justin Pollock, who also had a 95 on his second run, but JTP in that Falcon Tires Ford Mustang going against Kazuya Taguchi in this Toyota 86. Kazuya out front, Pollock in that chase position. Kazuya Taguchi initiating. Justin Pollock mimicking that angle, coming to that first front clip. Kazuya Taguchi, wow, look at that. Really ripping, gripping up the hill into those Gator Rumble strips. Now in that second outside zone, not as deep as we saw. And we started things off really aggressively. You saw how deep field and Chelsea went, so you saw that. But look at Pollock, great composure in that chase position. You saw him really mimicking the angle, giving himself enough room where he kind of wanted to grow on, right? So he gave him room and then would just lunge forward. Great job by JTP. Well, after a very scary moment yesterday in qualifying, JTP looks like he's on a bit of a tear here. He had experience in mechanical, came back, scored a 95, but he was stuck outside of the top 24. Now here against Kazuya Taguchi, he's trying to do some more work. Taguchi out front, misses that second outside zone. Pollock taking advantage of the tighter line there to gain proximity as they leave. The keyhole now coming down the hill here. More pressure by Justin Pollock. Backs off for a second, then back in the pocket there. And Kazuya Taguchi doing a great job of his own in the lead position, getting himself in the right places on the course and maxing out that angle as best he can through that final inside clip. So good battle here. This is a much different start than the top 32. Uh, it, it, that warranted a stutter. M -m 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 much good, right? Like, absolutely awesome. I, I feel like just as the events are opening up and uh, we're, we're tripping over our words because it's exciting, man. It's great to see everybody just back again because you Taguchi, uh, a new vehicle. Uh, I know Justin Pollock has been working on this vehicle as well. As here we go. Now JTP, he's going to get that clean air, or slightly clean. Still got some smoke linger in the air. Kazuya Taguchi's going to chase him down. Let's see this initiation. He likes to go for the backies. Oh, that's, that's pretty. That's pretty. I like it. Let's go, JTP. Kazuya Taguchi, look at him. He throws on the grappling hook. Doesn't mimic the angle, but definitely gets out. So look at Justin Paul. Gets deeper in that second outside zone. Tightens up to that front clip. Now exiting out of the keyhole. How are they going to handle that? Both of them getting into the dirt. Quickly to that touch and go. And then that final last inside clip. Great job by both of them, Ryan. I would say that, you know, I really liked. Kazuya looks really comfortable in that brand new car. I'll tell you that. Seemed that Justin got a little deeper on that second outside zone. Well, I like this approach from Taguchi because there was a mirroring effect from initiation to the first inside clip. After the first inside clip, he lost a little bit of ground there. He showeled up just a little bit. JTP was able to get a bit deeper into outside zone number two. And you can see the fluidity here. The transitions are nice from JTP. Taguchi's putting up a fight. There's no question about it. He had a couple little tiny flubs. And we'll see how the judges take both of those things into account. But uh, we are having some battles on our hand here, Jared, as we take a look one more time through that final turn on board with the FPV. 
Kazuya Taguchi and Justin Pollock. All right, what do we got? Do we have a result? Our judges tabulating their scores, putting them in. Pollock and Taguchi. Claims? Make it, we, got, we, got, we got some claims, we got some reviewing going on? Nah. There we go, slide him left for Pollock, right for Taguchi, and there it is, JTP gets the win. Lontane, if you would, please throw on your headset. It was unanimous, um, your reasoning. I, I, again, for me, it was pretty much the keyhole. This is right in front of the judges. You know, if you're gonna make a mistake, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna make something sensational, Justin went way deeper on that second outer zone. That's pretty much what clinched it for us. I think that Kazuka, uh, Kazuki did an amazing job. To <laughs> it's okay. We're all, we're, all get, we're, yeah. we're all getting back. We're all coming out of Kazuya <laughs> Taguchi. Sage, Sage can't breathe right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's losing Taguchi, it. Taguchi <laughs> uh, really impressed us. This is his first event in this brand new car, and he did a great job. The only thing was on his lead, he didn't do a great job in outside zone one, and he definitely missed outside zone two by a lot. And uh, JTP did a much better job in that case. Their chases, I think, were pretty similar, uh, but... Really, what put it over was uh, JTP's lead being a much better in the uh, keyhole here. I like that. Uchi Wally Wally, Uchi Bang Bang. What did I say? Kazuki? I don't know. I yeah. I think you wanted a Pazuki. You wanted Taguchi, a pizza cookie. Yeah. And then I thought you were rapping. I thought you were doing Uchi Wally Wally, <laughs> Uchi Bang Bang. But no. And then, yeah. And then, and then it went X rated. Now you're just blushing. So Sage, we need to get back to Japan. We've forgotten how to pronounce their, the names now. Yeah. So, uh, we need to get back there. Let's go. All right. We're warming up some tires here. The GT radio variety underneath that of the Royal Purple Riley Auto Parts. Two Jay-Z powered BMW of Dylan, the Dozer Hughes, and they're already on the line. Vaughn Gittin Jr., your defending and two-time Formula Gym champion, RTR, ready to rock. Captain Clutch Kick here, ready to throw down in that Monster Energy Nitto Tire Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D. The D stands for drift. As yeah, it's uh it's about to get stinky in a good way, if you know what I mean. As Vaughn Gittin Jr. will lead, Dylan Hughes will give chase on this top 16 battle. We are just a few battles in. If you're just joining us, we got two winners already in the grade eight as the top 16 Royal Purple, the Royal Purple Synthetic Experts official engine oil of Formula Drift. Coming down the pipe, here we go. Vaughn Gibbs Jr. initiates. Look at the angle from Vaughn Dillon, just kind of a slow roller into it, and he is bathing in that Nitto tire smoke. Here goes Vaughn. First outside zone, tick in the box, the second outside zone. Woo! Dylan Hughes lunges forward, he takes a shallower line, he compromises that line in order to get that proximity. And now on that touch and go, Vaughn doesn't get all the way in, but both of them do on that last inside clip. Great job by both drivers, but Vaughn just really flexing on him, feeling that momentum from last year, a lot of confidence in his corner. A bit of a dangerous move there from Dylan Hughes coming down after initiation. He got a little bit held up there, didn't match the angle of Vaughn Jr. Then he gets lost in the smoke here for a second. Luckily, he pulls it out, and incredibly, he's able to surge forward by this inside clip and nearly tap Vaughn Gittin Jr. But Vaughn did some damage out front. Look at the way he filled the outside zone. Look at how close he was on that inside clip. Look how stable he is on the course through this final section, getting to the touch and go, and then just tapping that inside clip. So it's a solid lead from Vaughn Gittin Jr. Dylan will need one of those. Yeah. And now that we've seen Dylan's chase, we have something to compare as Vaughn goes to the chase position. You know what, and, and knowing Vaughn, when, when his seasons just came together to win the championship, it's when he didn't beat himself. And I'm, I'm not, you know, not curse, you know, not cursing the announcer's curse of Vaughn Gittin Jr., but usually when he just comes together, keeps it calm and collected, and doesn't overcook it and burn the dinner, that's when he comes out on top. So Dylan Hughes, he's got the clean air. How's Vaughn Gittin Jr. gonna chase him down? Dylan Hughes initiates, uses all the track, gets out to the dust and throws, starts that GT radial burn. Oh, and there it is, Vaughn Gittin Jr. comes in, shallow, tightens it up, out to that second outside zone, gets out there, hits it and quits it. But Vaughn Gittin Jr., look at this, he is sweating him, the chrome nose in the back end of that BMW, quickly getting out of that keyhole. And look at this, Dylan Hughes bringing it up and around that final front clip. So great execution. Let's break it down here, Mr. Sage. Well, it is certainly getting wild up here with these guys, every battle seeming to progress. Dylan Hughes kind of hitting that stride here. Vaughn Gittin Jr., defending champion, is getting the pressure put on him. Let's see if there was enough to swing the judge's decision one way or the other. One way 
or the other. Yeah, you did that, and you also did uh, come together. So I was thinking, doom, 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 doom. A little, little Beatles jam. I'm yeah. cool with that. Yeah, of course. Come together. Right now, with the score, you and me. Judges quickly asking for a BC Racing side-by-side -side instant replay. BC Racing, the official suspension of Formula Drift, go for gold. Look at this overhead view. Here it is, coming at you. What do you got, Ryan? Well, let's take a look at this. Look at the smoke lingering on the right-hand side from the first half of the battle. You can see Dylan is in the lead on the right, Vaughn on the left. Judges here looking for something that would point the needle in one driver's direction or the other. Now, Dylan in his chase did struggle a little bit after the initiation. He fell back. Vaughn, on the right-hand side of your screen, fell back on the latter part of the course. Are those equalizing mistakes? And then you look at the lead runs. That may be part of what the judges are looking at. Uh, and they also may be getting a lot more nuanced than I'm presenting it. But <laughs> as they await the results, these two drivers certainly biting those fingernails. I don't know. What do we got? We got uh, we got our director here making claims. Or he already saw the uh, the outcome. Hey, who's our who's our drone pilots? We got we we got to give them shout outs. Who's our drone pilot this this event? Ryan. Here we go. Here's another side by side. Hold on one sec, Jared. Here yeah, we go. Please. Yeah. Here's here's the FPV drone. This is Nub. And as we take a look on board, you can see Vaughn Gittin Jr. here in that chase position and Dylan in the chase there. Pretty close on that section of the course. I think the judges are going to be looking at the beginning uh, up to the middle part for Dylan and the end for Vaughn on the second half of the battle. Ryan, the fans in the building are chanting one more time. Which way do you guys think it's going? Vaughn Gittin Jr., Dylan Hughes, one more time. Vaughn Gittin Jr. gets the win. Vaughn Ginn Jr. gets the win. It is unanimous. The fans were exploding with an OMT. Not the case. Lontane, throw on your headset there, bud. Talk to me. What do you got? Vaughn Ginn Jr., unanimous. It came down to Dylan's areas of compromise compared to Gittin's areas of compromise in the chase. Um, it looked like Dylan made more compromises in some key areas outside zone one and two. Um, and he wasn't really following the line that Vaughn was laying down as well. Vaughn did a better job at his chase of mimicking what Dylan was doing throughout the majority of the course without making those compromises. I'm going to stop using the word cheat. You're helping me out. Yes, please. Yep. <laughs> eh, eh. But you ever say cheat, I'm just going to slap you. <laughs> and then Vaughn, I think, did a little bit better on his lead as well in a couple of key areas. Um, Dylan did an amazing job, though, in outside zone two. I have to say that was pretty clean through there. It got really deep. Uh, but, you know, look at Dylan's ch uh, chase through the keyhole, his angle, and his line mimic. He's, he's off quite a bit. So there. you would say close on the leads, but uh, in, in the chase was more apparent. Yeah, the chase really is what put it over for me. Copy that. All right, Vaughn Gittin Jr., Captain Clutch Kick. Ryan Turk from New Hampshire coming up from Switzerland. His first time in Formula Drift Top 16. He says his dreams are coming true. Well, Mr. Meyer... You got served a healthy dose of Ryan Turk. See if uh, you get Turked here as the Type S underglow lights are on. Here we go. The Type S, the official lighting of Formula Drift. Ryan Turk up front. Meyer out back. Ryan Turk initiates that comeout. Toyota Racing Toyota Corolla hatchback. Big angle from him. Whoa, buddy. Looks more rally car than drift car. Overcooks it. Ryan Turk goes wild on initiation. Dips out to that second outer zone. As E. Meyer, wow, look at this. E. Meyer could have an advantage here, Ryan, because right on initiation, Ryan overcooked it. You could see the little brown cloud being kicked up. Not a sign of a good time. It's going to be it's going to be whether or not Turk had an unchaseable lead. That's what the judges are going to be looking at here. Even after so many years as a veteran, Ryan Turk does overcook it into that first inside clip, and then he has to wrap it back around. Now, he unwinds the angle in a very interesting way here. So he kind of kicks it back. Now he's got angle, 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 and then right there he straightens it out and almost kind of has to reinitiate. I don't even, I don't think on that alone they would give it an incomplete. I think they would give it an incomplete on the fact that it really disrupted the chase driver's opportunity for chasing uh, between inside clip number one uh, and the area where we have the downhill touch and go. So. We'll see, I mean, can we, judges, can we confirm, is, is that an incomplete or are we still, is that still uh, being debated? Oh, they're gonna, oh, they're gonna keep it they're closed. They're keeping it, keeping it tight. All We're right, that's fine. Seal the envelope, baby. All right, that's fine. 
Well, Ryan Turk, that's uh, that's his back bumper there. So, and I, I think that's I think that's smart, right? I mean, just sealing her lips. I mean, it's definitely smart in terms of this. Now the spotters don't know, right? And so, if you don't know, that means you really do have to go 100 percent. Got it. Got it. Yeah. It's uh, if, if you're Eves. Right. Yeah. I mean, Eve Meyer. I, I was saying that you're being dealt a you know healthy dose of Ryan Turk, but look, and I talked about that earlier with Von Gittin Jr. You know, you had some wobbles there, and that's usually when you get these these vets that are very familiar with this track, they overthink it, right? And I do I do know that Ryan Turk, during that very short break, he was thrashing on his car. I, mm -hmm. I went down to the pits, and I talked to his wife, Shannon, and she says, Ryan's up there. He's trying to change his setup. He might be so, you know, and, and we know that. They, these guys get really creative as far as setups. And, and last night, you know, seeing that qualifying, seeing how the car, you know, how, how it handles out here it, when, when the weather changes. Yeah, and just taking a look here at the momentum map one more time, you see those two distinct areas, and they're long. And we, if you're a fan, you've been watching this for one minute or 10 years, you understand that after initiation, there's a, a big decrease in momentum there on that inside clip. Yeah. Not timing that appropriately is where problems come into play. Either too slow, and you pinch off the driver, you don't have the momentum mo moving out. Too fast, you go in the kitty litter. Too fast, you really, really go in the kitty litter, and it's over. <laughs> and you go in the grass, and yard sale. Here we go. All right, here we go. Eve Meyer now in front. He gets a clean air. Look at Ryan Turk all over him as he, oh, he is pushing around the track as he transitions now coming up the hill into that first outside zone. Ryan Turk banging doors wheel to wheel. In that second outside zone now tightening up to that clip in the keyhole. Gotta love Eve. His tenacity, oh, Ryan Turk goes on the dirt. That is not where you want to go. And Eve Meyer, you know what? He didn't get handed this. He absolutely put it down. Absolutely great execution there by Eve Meyer from Switzerland. Could be taking out Ryan Turk, an absolute legend, Ryan. Yeah, what unbelievable turn of events here, Jared, as we take a look at Ryan Turk. You can tell by the furiosity in his driving that he is at least assuming at bare minimum that he's at a deficit here. Tapping Eve Meyer going up the hill, tapping him again. Eve holding it together pretty well here and being able to just kind of be stable around the track and not worry about that crazy vehicle behind him, really trying to keep the pressure on and almost take him out because Ryan knows that he has to be aggressive. He's willing to get right up on the back bumper. He's willing to make some, some love taps. And a great shot here from the FPV drone, seeing the, the left front wheel of Ryan Turk tapping Eve Meyer. But uh, you can tell the fast-paced nature of this from Ryan Turk indicates to me that he feels like he's at a disadvantage. He's got to do whatever he can to turn the tide. I loved how Eve kept his composure. And speaking of composure, he composed himself a great eight berth. Eve Meyer takes out Ryan Turk in that gum out. Toyota Racing, Corolla hatchback. Eve Meyer moves on to the drift force. Is strong with this one. Lorette, what's going on, girl? Hey, in the off season, the RTR team rebuilt the engine, had a complete teardown. Von Gettin Jr. said, don't mess with perfection, but Von, were you looking for refinement in the car? Yeah, you know, we, um, you know, the, the engine teardown, you know, that's just uh, preventive maintenance, you know. There's, Ford Performance motor is just super reliable. Get apart and get it ready for another year battle. Uh, we made a, a few changes uh, on the car to help it drive a little bit better. And we're learning tonight that it uh, slowed us down a little bit compared to last year. You know, we're always the fastest this track. And we've had to do a couple things to the car between top 32 and now to get to where we are. And, um, you know, feeling really good. Just had a battle with Dylan Hughes. And I can't say enough good things about Dylan. You know, he's been coming up he's a hard hard fighter he comes from motocross i relate and has been him and we battle he really pushed me hard so uh he should be proud but i'm pumped to be moving on the grade eight and uh yeah hope y'all having fun atlanta von Gittin jr thank you so much jared thank you so much lorette nickel and yeah von Gittin jr he'll be going against now this fd uh you know first time comer in top 16 eve meyer here we go, Frederick Osbo, Jeff Jones. What do we got? Osbo and Jones. Osbo with that Rockstar Toyota Supra, a nasty initiation there. Really well done. Jeff Jones taking that more straight line approach, but very fluid. Gotta love this. As Osbo comes now into the keyhole, into that second outside zone. Jeff Jones right there. Jeff Jones could not be shaken. Mr. 818 worldwide bringing it to the former champ of Osbo. Look at that, Ryan. Jeff Jones impresses me 
every time he goes around. Love it. Another great start to a battle here. Frederick Osbo, silky smooth, really nothing wrong with that lead run. But you will never see Jeff Jones get pushed over by anybody, even a champion in Frederick Osbo. He does lose a little bit of ground on initiation. The angle there from Frederick Osbo was really good and deep, and he used very minimal e-break. But here is where Jones starts making his mark. He's able to get right up on the door of Frederick Osbo after outside zone number two and into that inside clip. And as he moves back around here, he's still in the fight, keeping the pressure on Osbo. But Osbo, with that incredible lead, has also made it tough on Jones. They're gonna have to switch things up and see who has the better overall performance in their lead in the chase runs. All right. All right. Jeff Jones calling five. We are hearing from the race official Pat saying uh, Jeff Jones is calling a competition timeout. So Jeff Jones calls his competition timeout. That is a five minute allotment. Once he gets his car back to the hot pits, he gets hands on the car. We'll see if uh, his car is up and running. I, I mean, didn't look like anything was wrong. He was really giving it to Frederick Osbo. And we know Osbo is one of the best chase cars in the business. And Ryan, you said it perfectly, just about getting getting more familiar with his vehicle. So NGK timeout, in addition to providing spark plugs for domestic and import vehicles, NGK produces spark plugs for motorcycles, power sports, marine, and outdoor power equipment. NGK also offers complimentary ignition products, including ignition coils, resistor caps, spark plug wires, and high performance cables. For reliable performance, trust NGK, the ignition specialist. Visit ngksparkplugs.com to learn how NGK is redefining the category with high ignitability technology through its Ruthenium HX spark plugs. All right, so Jeff Jones calls that competition time out. Also, uh, the lights are going, or the sun is setting, but the lights are turning on because Type S, I don't know if you're seeing the underglow underneath every single one of the cars, the LED around the track, Type S just has their Pro Series LED kits now available at types.com. Use code FDATL10 for 10% off site-wide. Promotion ends May 24th, max one per customer. So again, types.com. FDATL for 10% off. One more power, need better reliability? Hit up BC for the good stuff. Cams, cranks, rods, stroker kits. I mean, you know the name. Brian Crower has your high performance needs covered. And for a limited time, get 10% off. Go to runbc.com using promo code Let's Go Racing. So if you need some parts, cams, cranks, rods, stroker kits, you know where to go. BrianCrower.com and runbc.com. All right, Lorette Nickel just checked in with Jeff. Lorette, what's up? Thank you, Jared. Uh, Jeff told me that he has one cylinder, so he wiring grip. He can follow, but he's really about his lead run. So the guy's working right now, again, on one cylinder and uh, team working hard to get it back together. Ah, bummer. Thank you so much for the update. So down a cylinder, seven, uh, you know, seven cylinders. Wouldn't have noticed. Wouldn't have noticed at <laughs> all, dude. I mean, that was really, really well done. And that's, that's what Jeff is all about, tenacity, you know, just, uh, just really getting after it. It's not about the, you know, he's, he's got a lot of fight in him, right? So Dean Carney, Brandon Sorensen. Look at this, the baby-faced assassin here, Brandon Sorensen, going against Dean Carney. He is out for blood. He looks like, uh, looks like carnage. He looks like a hooligan. He's ready to throw down. I love Dean. Spent a lot of time with him over, over the last, uh, last couple of years and, and just, you know, giving out vipers and just having a lot of fun. And I, I really like his spirit and his tenacity. So the Oracle Lighting Dodge Viper, he is ready to throw down against this 212 performance. BMW of Brandon Sorensen. Brandon, again, the youngest driver ever to qualify in Formula Drift competition. Brandon Sorensen out front. Dean Carnage Carney in the chase position. Coming down the hill as the Oracle lights are on the back bumper of that BMW. Look at that nasty flick by Dean Carney. Oh, Brandon going off. Wow, was that just crazy understeer? Did something happen? I mean, Brandon absolutely shot off. There was no contact. So that means that there will be a massive deficit that unfortunately Brandon will have. Yeah, if I had to speculate there, big, powerful, 12-cylinder Viper behind me. I, I need to go fast. 10-cylinder. Ten 10-cylinder. Ten I need to go super fast um, and just kind of overcook it into the first corner, understeer a little bit, and then basically pretty much couldn't get out of that. Yeah. So let's take a look at it again. 
We see a lot of this here, drivers trying to figure out the best way to approach. And then I think as he, before he was transitioning, or after he was transitioning from that inside clip, I think he kind of knew that he had cooked it here. Because up until this point, a little bit before there, he could have been okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was just sliding towards the kitty litter, and then he just straightened out. I mean, he was just coming in way too hot. It didn't grip up. It didn't have, like, the side bite, you know, that, that we saw previously. And, and he looked he looked good in the 32. Talking about uh, Brandon Sorensen, he went against Trenton Beecham. So it, it wasn't just a pushover battle. He definitely earned it. So we got, we got two minutes here for Jones. Oh, come on, baby. Let's go. Atlanta, the clock is ticking. So, you know. You see the clock in the background there? Yeah, what does that say? 206. Yeah. We got Kevin back there. Big Kev. Yeah, two minutes right there. So let's alternate the positions here for Carney and Sorensen. You can see Osbo. He's rip roaring, ready to go. He's on deck. He's in the batting circle. We're officially halfway through the top 16. On the left side of the bracket, Matt Field against JTP Vonkin Jr. versus Eve Meyer. And now, who's moving on? Carney and Sorensen. If Carney keeps it on the road, he will advance into the great eight. Wow, real. Another oh, one. my goodness. Another one. Another one. Now, this one at first pass looks a little bit more interesting because there was contact there, at least from what I saw in terms of the movement of the vehicles. There was a big, long e brake pull from Dean around that inside clip. Now remember, the D-cell zone goes all the way to the inside inside clip, and you need to be back on throttle there, the momentum zone. Um, there, there are often times when too much D-celling, too yeah. much downside in momentum is a problem. That's a- He just it, wrapped it right around the pole. But, like. I, but I, think, I think Dean is not doing that. I think he did have a long e-brake pull. He let it off for a second, but he's getting back on throttle by the inside clip. Look at the right rear. E-brake on throttle, e-brake on throttle, and then tap. Right. So Silverson may have just been closing a little bit too aggressively there. Um, that's my read on it, just looking at it in real time right now, a couple of replays, but the judges may think differently. Perspective, man. All the cameras in the world and, and, and people be like, nah, dude, that's not how I saw it. Interpretation. Ter oh, my gosh. Ah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful day here and, and weekend. And oh, absolutely. It's been the best. Some beautiful people out here. Just everybody has been so gracious and I think empathetic towards just everybody. Yeah, there's also been a little bit of vibe like, we doing this? Right. Is it cool? <laughs> are, we, are we all right? It's all right. Uh, uh, like, everybody's, yeah. looking at, everybody's looking at their shoulders, right? All right, they, the, the judges want another look at it. So let, let's take a look at Sorensen. Let's focus on Sorensen a little bit more this time. Kind of a straight line approach following Dean. You can see he's also e-braking along with Dean. I think, I think Dean is kind of okay here um, after watching it for the third time. It looks like he did e-brake pull for a long period of time. Then he gets off, a little bit of an e-brake again, right at inside clip number one. Okay, here's, uh, a di here's a different angle. And then back on throttle. Now we'll look at, look at, look at Dean's right oh, rear. The e-brake, e-brake, e-brake. He's going to let it off. He's going to unwind it right about there. And I think he does another little tap right there. And then he's back on throttle. And it looks like yeah, Brandon Sorensen was just coming in. I mean, coming it, in I, wouldn't, I wouldn't fault. Sorensen for that like oh you did a bad job no it's just it's just this is a crazy entry here and you really need to have kind of a fine tooth comb approach uh, with each competitor because the differences in initiation whether whether it's an Osbo using one side of the course going to the next right. straight line approach long e-brake pull like there's just so many things that you have to adjust to because we don't constrain the drivers on the, their initiation approach and you got to think how much track time Dean has had here at Road Atlanta compared to Brandon I mean, he's got he's got proper angle, and Brandon just he was just coming get, in hot. He was just starting to get on throttle, and I could see the judges saying maybe Dean got, is getting on throttle a little bit late. You don't see the apparent smoke until after the inside clip, but his wheels were definitely moving, and I think you could probably say he was getting on throttle there. But yeah, this is uh, this is a tough one. Oh boy, we got uh, Nick Fosekas. He's texting he's texting me some things right now. Our, our director's making claims right now. What do, we, what do we got, Kemp? Okay. All right. Nick Fosekis on the building, tuning in, watching. Hashtag FDATL, at Formula D on IG. 
A lot of info just streaming in, coming in. Dean Carney, Brandon Sorensen. Man, that sun drops. It, it, gets, it gets brisk, and I, I really think that's going to play another role as far as a, a variable for these drivers. And, and, and Dean, he, he was notably one that said, I've been driving on the same tires for 10 years, <laughs> and now i got to change them? <laughs> you know? like That was pretty good. You went halfway on that. Yeah, I didn't go full on. Yeah. I didn't go full on. Yeah. Yes, uh, this is a tough one, Jared. I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the judges are now ready to speak to us, so <laughs> let's go ahead and open up their mics and see what they have to say. Yeah, this is a really tough one, guys. It comes down to our momentum map, and this year we're, we we're, we're pretty lucky that we actually made it on an, an actual aerial shot of this track. The momentum map ends right at inside clip number one, and we had to watch over and over again to see when Dean pulled that handbrake the second time. And it looks like, to me personally, it was before inside clip one, and he was back on throttle at the clip. We say the absolute latest point in time you can get back on throttle is at the inside clip. And it looks like he was just back on throttle, and uh, Sorensen got on throttle and kind of got into him. So um, it, it depends how the other judges are going to look at it. We analyzed it independently while we talked about it there. I think we have different opinions on, on what occurred, uh, but we'll see how they, they put their votes in. So there are a few different ways that can go. Uh, Sorensen got an incomplete in his lead uh, by going off the track there. Um, and now it's down to is this Dean's fault, Sorensen's fault, or shared fault on this one? Um, and uh, that determination will, will determine how, f how we go forward from here. Well, it does look like two out of the three of you are decided. We just got the last yep, judge's survey vote, says. so here we go. Yeah. So Dean Carney, there it is. So Dean Carney gets the win, and it was not unanimous. So Brian yeah. Egger and Ryan Lontaine say Dean Carney, so elaborate if you will, Chris, uh, Chris went against the grain here and said one more time. Yeah, he, be he believed that second hang handbrake pull was the one that did it for Dean that, um, that caught made it. So he put fall. up a roadblock. Basically, yeah. That's, that's Chris's right. perspective. Okay. And, I, and I'm kind of with that. You know, I, that's, this was a close one. It I, is a I, close I could one. Totally, I could totally see it uh, going both ways. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, Brandon, you know, Brandon made that mistake on the first run. But hold your head up high, man. I mean, just for, for again, Formula Drift rookie coming into pro. Top talent, 16, six, 16 years event. old. Like, yeah, come on. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Hats off to Brandon Sorensen and the Sorensen Motorsports team, 2 on 2 performance. Uh, but Dean Carnage Carney will move on. Ryan, absolutely amazing event so far. And we are already uh, more than halfway through the top 16. Jeff Jones made it. Look at that. Jones, the relentless one, 818, is in the building. So now who is Dean Carney going to be going against? Will it be the rock star Toyota Supra Frederick Osbo or the 818 Edelbrock Nissan Z of Jeff Jones? All right, so Carnage moves on. All right, so we have five vehicles already in. As I said, Field versus JTP, Gittin versus Eve Meyer. And this was a really good run here with Osbo out front. He saw Jones. Ryan, walk us through it. Yeah, Osbo, silky smooth. Look at that little tap right there by Jones. Super aggressive by Jones, keeping Osbo within relative distance to himself. That's what you want to see. You want to see that aggressive driving. But Osbo, as he is known for, laying down the gauntlet on the lead run and making it a really uphill battle for Jeff Jones here, who's got to focus so much on that lead run uh, and try to get as close to what Osbo did. And he is certainly capable of that. He uh, had a good day yesterday, but Osbo is also going to be in a position where he's going to want to stay aggressive to Jeff Jones. Oh, man, people around the world watching. Jeff Jones, his wife in the building, Osbo. Don't know where Hunter's at, but here we go. Jeff Jones leading. Frederick Osbo giving chase. Jeff Jones initiating into that first front clip. And look at that transition. Wow. Well done. Look at Osbo just nicking that <laughs> course marker. Jeff Jones swinging for the fences, fills that second outside zone into that second front clip outside of the keyhole. Oh, Jeff Jones shot outside wide, then tries to tighten it up there on that touch and go. And then Jeff Jones across that front clip. Man, what do you think? Riley Ongpin, JP Ongpin, you guys are watching at home. Riley, shout out to you. How's it going, homeboy? Ryan, what do you think of that run? It, it does not get much closer in terms of proximity than Osbo to Jones from initiation to outside zone number two. And watch the transitions here. Boom, snaps it right there. He's in the pocket, super close, charging up right up to Jeff Jones. Maybe even had a little tire rub there. And again, 
getting right in the pocket here into that second outside zone. Jones fills it. Oswald takes a tighter line. So that was one of the little sacrifices oh, or compromises. There. But then he goes a little bit wide. He has to work his way back to the touch and go. He goes a little bit late there. Osbo adjusts as well. And another great battle between these two veterans of the sport. Oswo really keeping the pressure on all the way up the hill, making that tiny adjustment in outside zone two to take that tighter line. Jones kind of tricks him a little bit, goes wide out the horseshoe, and Oswo has to quickly react to that. And uh, we finish things up with now the judges taking a look at both runs. So Jeff Jones, again, continuing to impress us, and Frederick Osbo on a tear so far here in 2021 from qualifying into his battles here. We will find out if Os Frederick Osbo is going to move forward or if it's going to be Jeff Jones. But before that, let's take a look at a side-by-side -side and see if we can learn any more truth here between Osbo and Jeff Jones. So the side-by-side, -side I think, is going to be the real indicator because we had, um, you know, we had we had some time in between. So now I think this is really going to be a true indicator. I am absolutely just impressed. Oh wow, yo. Is that a problem? Got that, got that stance lap on that back right. All right, here is the side-by-side, -side, Ryan, the BC Racing. Go for gold. Yeah, you can see Osbo's initiation, a little bit different than Jones's. Osbo, big angle there from the onset. He's been impressing with that initiation, but Jones not letting him get away. Osbo a bit tighter, makes a little bit of an adjustment there. Good job by both guys in that second outside zone. Jones super tight on Osbo to inside clip one. This is where Osbo takes advantage of Jones shooting wide, but then Jones is able to push out ahead again. So good battle here. Nothing left on the track between these two guys. I don't remember yeah. it looking like that. No, I, I don't know how that happened. Is he, is he, on, is he on airbags? <laughs> I know he's not. All right, so here we go. Slide him left for Osbo, right for Jones. And uh, we got Jeff Jones getting the win. Is that correct? Is that correct? Jeff Jones getting the win. So Jeff Jones takes down Frederick Osbo. Look at this, Lontane, that was unanimous. Look at Jones. And so Lontane going to, turn on the mic. As, want to make sure? Okay. So looking at what happened with uh, Jeff Jones, did a great job in his lead, lead run. Uh, you can see Osbo, maybe it happened around outside zone number one. We're not sure where exactly, but you could definitely see his car was affected by something. Uh, he had a couple of corrections coming up to outside zone one. The car straightened up a bit, and it really happened leaving the uh, keyhole here going downhill. You can see his car, I think he straightened up by, before his transition going to inside clip number three before the finish line. Um, that definitely affected his car. We don't know what happened exactly, but like you said, you could see it at the top of the hill there, the right rear, something was broken. Uh, Jeff Jones just did a better job in his chase too. He was mimicking Osbo's line, uh, really good proximity. So Jeff Jones did a great job um, on his own, but he was given a little bit of a gift there by having uh, Osbo's, whatever that was, suspension brake yeah. in the right he rear. He might have hit the rumble strip or something. And, and yeah, but it was. Because that was his back left. It was his right rear oh, his that back was right. Yeah, so we don't know exactly what would have affected huh. it. Maybe it was something from previous, yeah. you know, that stressed a, a suspension arm or something, but um, good job for uh, Jeff Jones getting yep. Here we go. We're back to the action. Odie Bakshi going against that of Travis Reeder. Whoa, well, look at that. Reeder <laughs> jumps into formation. Absolutely frazzled by that. Ooh! Reader overcooks it now. Again, Ryan, this seems like a different Odie Bakshi's in 2021. Travis Reader debuting this new car. Odie Bakshi's loud and proud, just nasty with it. Look at that. Odie Bakshi's just seems absolutely possessed. And you pointed it out early, Ryan. Yeah, so important, Jared, to get a good start from wow. that first inside clip. And uh, Odie Bocchis was able to do that pretty consistently here. He rolls into it, nice smooth initiation, nothing overly aggressive. Reader's coming up super hot. He drops the two uh, right tires uh, and uh, onto the grass there and really comes unstuck for a second. Odie, meanwhile, is maintaining a really good line out front. He's consistent. He went a little bit wide on that inside clip, which allowed Reader to catch up. But we are seeing that those mistakes, those little tiny mistakes that are made, it could be a, a millimeter here or there on that approach to the end. And it looks like Reader might be broken. Yeah, he has gone to competition timeout, actually, so. You look at, see how the car's moving around? Oh, yeah. 
Weeble Wobble. Wow, yeah, so he is calling a competition timeout now. Let's see if we can get a, a um, one more look at it. But it looks like on the on the approach, Reader just got a, a, himself into a little bit of trouble behind Odie. And we've seen that driver's just going a little bit too hard in yep. the chase position, trying to anticipate where that lead driver is going to go. I mean, this would be a lot easier if we told everybody how to do a straight line entry e-brake. It would be <laughs> super predictable, right? Yeah. But we would, would lose a lot of the passion and the fun no, that's, of, of these drivers. That's the X factor. Yeah, of, of the way that they want to initiate. And it also makes, I think, the spotter's job that much more important, right? Let's do some scouting reports on how Odie's initiating, how Osbo's initiating, you know, how Reader's initiating. Right. And that becomes part of the game. So it will be a competition timeout for, for Travis Reeder. Jeff Jones, obviously a big celebration right now, who is uh, hanging out with Lorette. Lorette? Guys, got it fixed. look at the smile on this man's face. He was cylinder. He got it fixed. I Jeff it Jones, the got team it got it fixed, Lorette, took right. down a Titan in Osbo. Yes. Oh, man, taking Osbo down to get it is always the best eight and right now the rest of you guys better get your game ready because i'm coming for you if i get past osmo the rest of you are cake bro i'm excited we're gonna send this jackson's got the tools ready for the supercharger we're pulling that sucker off tonight we're sending it bro sending it jared back to you yo it's electric it's absolutely electric love jeff jones there's greg giving a little hug there and uh Yo, he says, anybody else? Anybody want some of this? Let's go. So, uh, yeah, love it. Congratulations, Jeff Jones. You're going to meet Dean Carnage Carney in the next battle. And, uh, yeah, Ryan. Jared, here it is. We, we pulled it back up to see if we could get a, a greater look. There was one little straightening aspect uh, from Frederick Osbo. Let's see if we can identify where the, bro the broken part may have played a role in Osbo here, uh, straightening and really giving this win here to Jeff Jones who deservedly got it because he really challenged Osbo. But the, Ryan, the straightening was the up the hill part. That was the big one. All right, so yeah, he was saying, uh, uh, we think from that point forward, he may have had that broken right rear. And we noticed that when we were sitting yep. at the uh, start finish line. But nonetheless, congratulations to Jeff Jones and his post event uh, or post battle interviews are always the best. <laughs> They're, they are probably some of the best. And look at that, we are three quarters away, done with top 16. Jeff Jones, Dean Carney. Next up, we got to, we have that half, of the second half of that battle. Odie Bakshi's Travis Reeder, he called that competition timeout. So he called the TO, the NGK competition timeout. As we are in the Royal Purple Top 16, Royal Purple the Synthetic Experts, the official engine oil of Formula Drift. Here's another look of Reader and Odie. And Odie making it look easy. Gets to about the half point of that second outside zone. Wraps it around. Just pulls strongly out of the keyhole. And Reader just seems a, a little bit frazzled, a little scrambled just from the jump on that first inside clip. So here's Odie on initiation. Goes across the nose, throws it in. You see Reader goes off, and there's that uh, that right, that left. So his right got into the kitty litter, but he does pull it out. And that Link Engine Management BMW. Hey, there we go. Yeah, really nice, tricky nice, situation nice, there. Yeah, so tough, especially that smoke line plays such a role in that area as well. Yeah, not a full send. You got to do baby send, little baby send. All right, when we come back, we have two more battles left in top 16. We won't find out until who's going to win here at Atlanta. The one, the only road Atlanta playing host to. Welcome to the red boy in the flannel. No, no <laughs> yawning, bro. No yawning, dog. Oh, man. Yeah, we got some. Uh, oh, no yawning in the yellow hoodie either. You in the yellow hoodie and the black hat. I see you yawning, bro. There's no yawning and, and drifting. You guys having fun? Make some noise, Atlanta. That's what's up. Thank you, guys and gals. Look at this, man. Absolutely. Oh, Anybody going to any other future Formula Drift rounds? Anybody going to any other Formula Drift rounds? Join us out at E-Town. Come on down to Florida. Come on down to Florida. Yeah, in two weeks. Come on down to Florida. I know, dude, I know dudes that flew in this morning at 2 a.m. from Florida. The Taxi Garage Boys. They flew $79. They got tickets last night. Flew out this morning. $79 bucks round trip. That's what they would say is uh, keeping it real. Yeah, that is, that is the realest as they come. 
Here we go, next up, here he is, a lot of anticipation, but uh, Castro is no pushover. Jonathan Castro, Adam LZ. Jonathan Castro, here in that Toyota 86, he looked absolutely feverish going against Josh Reynolds. Adam LZ, handled a little bit of help there from Dan Burkett. Adam LZ doesn't look, the car doesn't look completely settled. He looks nervous, for lack of a better term. Like, it just seems anxious a little bit. What do who, you think? Who wouldn't be, you know? I mean, it, it's, this is a high-pressure situation. Doesn't matter if it's qualifying. This is one of the most marquee venues. Uh-oh. One of the most marquee venues in the history of, of the sport. Yep. And one of the toughest, yep. for sure. So I think all the drivers are a little bit nervous. We certainly, you could at least make the argument that the beginning of top 32 expressed that in a certain kind of way. Most definitely. Most definitely. So uh, Castro whips it back around. The, the reason? Jump the light. <laughs> nice. This guy. Great sign. I, okay, you want, you want me to retire? Okay, I'll retire. No big deal. I just saw that sign. <laughs> Solid. All right, you come up here and announce. Let's see how you sound. <laughs> You won't. <laughs> All right, here we go. Back to the action. Jonathan Castro, Adam LZ. Jonathan Castro will lead. LZ give a chase. We got a clean start. Castro comes in across the nose of LZ's S15. Down to that front flip. Oh, LZ, great composure there. No nervousness whatsoever as Castro now comes in that first outside zone. And the second in the keyhole. Both of them filling that second outside zone. Oh man, LZ being absolutely soaked in smoke. But still, so from whatever happened in 32 to now right. here in 16, I, you know what, I said he was nervous, not, not whatsoever. No signs of nervousness now, Ryan. Good battle here. Yep. And, you know, as the chase driver, you're really trying to make a, a prediction and then make those adjustments on what the lead driver is doing. Castro getting on the throttle well before that first inside clip. Good adjustments there by LZ. We saw the, the clipping cone kind of flying around a little bit. LZ surging as Castro goes deep into that zone. Good move by LZ to follow the line. You can see he, was, he went out there to that second outside zone with Jonathan Castro. Big angle by Castro right before that transition coming down the hill. Nice job on the touch and go. LZ back in it here and driving blind through the smoke line and through the finish line there. So great first half of the battle between Jonathan Castro and Adam LZ. Man, you got to love the, the boys at Lean Customs. They're making pins for, uh, for all the racers and all the Formula Drift 2021 vehicles. So check them out at Lean Customs Pins, the custom pins, L-E-E-N. Absolutely legend dudes. Lean Customs, check them out, L-E-E-N Customs. All right, let's switch it up now. Adam LZ will lead, Castro will give chase. You can see the lights just barely through the smoke. Yeah, it smoked out. Through that star chicane, no cones were hit, and there it is. Quite a better view with that long camera. And now Adam LZ into that first front. Massive oh. angle there, and running a backy into that front clip, Castro. Gets thrown offline. LZ with the S15 into that second outside zone. Castro taking a bit of a shallower line. Adam LZ showing you why he's 2020 Rookie of the Year. And one more clip. Nasty snap by LZ. A little more comfortable. Woo! Yeah, a lot more comfortable. <laughs> and I think the fans would agree. Even his fans, I think it looks great. Really good run there by Adam LZ. I think Castro might have gotten shocked some, on some, that initiation. Some real points of differentiation, right? You have big angle initiation through that first inside clip, back on throttle, and then aggressively moves up the hill here, getting to that outside zone one and two. And you can see he was on throttle right there at the beginning of outside zone two. Castro struggled a little bit coming up the hill with LZ. Now he's starting to close the door a little bit, but LZ throws big angle through the touch and go, and then a nasty flick back around, which he throws right at that, at that angle, holds it through the finish line. And see right here, he could have met, totally flubbed that. Right. And we, we, we saw that with the Denofa battle, where big angle can be a very risky maneuver, but LZ was able to pull it off pretty well there. And then he had some other strong points throughout this run, especially things like this, coming down the touch and go, snapping it back around, 
super fast through that final inside clip. And taking a look at the overhead, we'll get even a better perspective. Nice fluid transitions by Adam LZ. You can see a little bit of a reduction. In, see, see how he, he kind of twists on the axis there, but snaps it right to angle, holds it, and maintains momentum. So great job by LZ in the lead position. Castro, a great lead of his own. An awesome battle here for the for the judges to digest. Yeah, this was, this was to be the final battle of top 16, but not the case because we will have to go back to <laughs> Odie and Reader with that competition timeout. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. How, this, how that happened. That was fun. Oh. <laughs> Adam LZ is in the chat on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, that was solid, dude. Yeah, just drifting and chatting. Just drifting and chatting, living the dream. Great job, Adam. Really, really well done. Great run by Castro. All right, let's shoot some more holes in it. Both had, again, great lead runs. I think it's really going to come down to the chase again, Ryan, as, as they were talking about earlier. Well, we got the ever popular BC Racing side-by-side -side requested and coming up. I, I'm going to focus my cognitive capacity right. on the chase runs here. Okay. We got that long shot, so this, this is where it gets interesting. Castro on the right in the chase. And LZ on, LZ the, left. on the left. LZ a little bit tighter on the chase coming up the hill. Castro surging, keeping it close on the right-hand side of your picture. LZ, big angle in the lead run. Castro kind of matching it, then having to back off. LZ looking close through the touch and go in his chase run and surging towards Castro on the finish line. Man, these guys are laying it down. All right. So it looks like Eggert says Adam LZ. Ryan Lund, Adam LZ gets the win. LZ unanimously gets the win. We'll get Lontane with his, uh, with his headphones here. We'll get him. His ear cups on and Ryan Lontane, hopefully you're on. What's up? Yes. Good. Yeah, Adam just did a better job overall. I uh, did a, uh, a better job of mimicking what Castro was doing during his lead run. He was mimicking the line and he didn't really take any, make any compromises throughout the run. Uh, unfortunately, Castro in his chase was not mimicking the line as well, especially coming up the hill towards outside zone one. He was quite a bit inside and Castro did drop a few tires which we see as compromises in the chase position, kind of cutting the course a little bit, trying to maintain that proximity. So that's what kind of did Castro in. I think it was one or maybe even potentially two tires at inside clip three just before going to the finish line. So um, had Castro kept it a little bit cleaner, kept it on the track and mimicked the line, maybe it would have been a little bit tighter. Right on, thank you for the insight there. Yeah, great effort by Castro. Really liked what LZ did and he is deserving of being in the great eights. I know he's got a lot of fans watching and I know Castro does as well. So here we go. Odie Bakshis gets a, a run here, minus Travis Reader. Unfortunately, he could not make it to the line. So Odie Bakshis gets the win here in Falcon Tires, S15. So here it is. We have our great eight. Our great eight is been shaped. And here is how it lays out here as, man, just an absolutely beautiful sight in more ways than one. Odie Bakshis advances on. Here is your bracket. Matt Field versus Justin Pollock. That's an all Falcon battle. One Corvette, one Mustang. Von Kent Jr., another Mustang going against. First time ever, not only top 16 and now in the great eight. The Drift Force driver in the BMW Eve Meyer from Switzerland. Jeff Jones defeats Frederick Osbo and moves into the grade eight. Dean Carnage Carney takes out Brandon Sorensen. Odie Bakshi, who we just saw, and one of the crowd favorites, Adam LZ. When we come back, the grade eight is upon us here at Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta. The Royal Purple Road to the Championship presented up, and everybody was absolutely bananas and bonkers, and it was awesome driving. Make today a good old day. Yeah, you Yeah, and you never know when the good old days are. Nope. You, you'll just look back like, those are the good old days. Yep. Uh, we might be in a good old day right now. That's what I'm saying. Make today <laughs> a good old day. In, in due time, this today is a good old day. All right. Speaking of good old days, good old boys, we got Matt Field and Justin Pollock, our first battle of the grade eight. 
teal and blue all over the track. It's a Falcon lose-win situation here, but which driver's gonna come out on top? The bow tie, the Corvette, the flags of Matt Field, the beast from the bay, the drift cave head caveman, Captain Caveman, going against JTP Justin Pollock. JTP and that Falcon tires, Roush performance, Ford Mustang, absolute rocket. So this should be a fun one. Both these guys, you know, they go for the backies, they go for the style, they go for the amplitude, that X factor, and there we go. Matt Field will lead. JTP chasing him down. Whoa, whoa, a little shots fired there. What? That was that was odd. As look at this, Matt Field composed, massive angle from him. Justin Pollock regains his composure. And now up the hill into that second outside zone goes Matt Field. JTP taking a bit of a shallower line here. And a hiccup there from Justin Pollock now coming back down the hill into the touch and go. Now Justin Pollock looks just maybe out of sorts. I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. Did so question is, did Matt Field kind of get in the way? No. Right, because he he was a lead car. Matt Field's a lead car. Lead driver has. Remember this That's last right. last year in St. Yes. Louis with Osbo. You can see Matt Field is able to move over and utilize the course as the lead driver. And Pollock made a very aggressive move to move out of the way. I don't think he was super close. It may have caught him off guard, uh, but it put him in a situation where he was basically playing catch up up until this point here. He surges forward to the inside clip, gets pinched off a little bit, goes out onto the grass, and then watch right here. He's going to have a little understeer for a yeah. second. Made it work, but not the greatest chase run in terms of having to play catch up. You want to be in the pocket from the get-go, putting pressure on the drivers and not worrying about mistakes that you have to fix. Right. So now we'll switch things up. Justin Pollock goes to the lead as Matt Field now moves to the chase position, what, which looks like he's got a bit of an advantage here going into the second half of the battle. All right, JTP out front. He has the clean air, no disruptions, no other vehicle in his way. Let's see how he fares out front. The winner going against either Von Kitt Jr. or Eve Meyer. And Pollock slowly crawling out of that start chicane. Justin Pollock, oh, look at that. Tip for tap right as Pollock initiates. So does Field. Field takes a little bit of angle out of it. Now headed up the hill. Into that first outside zone, both of them. No major errors, I like how it's going. Good flow, good proximity from field. He knocks over that inside clip. Now into the touch and go. And Pollock around that final clip, using all of the track, Ryan. Good run from both these guys. Look at the flames shooting out of Pollock's vehicle. Well, second half of the battle, pretty fun to watch here. That was an opportunity, I think, for Matt Field to, to shut the door and do it distinctly. I'm not sure that he did that, but he probably did enough here. Let's take a look at it. Justin Pollock back on throttle before inside clip one. Matt Field trying to attack coming up the hill here, but Justin keeping him at bay. Field makes a little bit of an adjustment there as now they re-enter the horseshoe here. You can see just the dynamics of the car backing forth, braking, making adjustments. Field through the smoke line, trying to stay on the inside here. Doesn't want to get lost. Here it is coming out of the horseshoe. You can see Field does make a little bit of an adjustment. And so that's what the judges are going to be looking at. I think the chase runs by both drivers were not the exclamation point chase runs. Right. Lead runs were pretty good both ways around, but it's going to be waiting of those mistakes. I think we're really splitting hairs here. And, and you know, yeah. I, oh, wow, quickly. Look at this. Slide, slide him left for Field, right for Pollock. And it looks like... Matt Field gets the victory. Matt Field moves on to the final four. And look at that, his mantra and his mindset is working out for the Beast in the Bay. Justin Pollock, as uh, his, his day and evening has end, but a great effort for him. Great to see him running and, and looking strong. Yeah, so far it's gonna be an interesting uh, championship lineup. We've got Matt Field, our first driver, into the final four. Uh, getting in Meyer up next. Pollock with a, a great eight exit, which is pretty good for him to start off the season. Obviously, he is always wanting to be a championship contender and has been right there for the majority of his career. We've got Jeff Jones and Dean Carney on the other side, and then Odie Bakchis and Adam LZ. So some new names. Yep. Some guys that we expect to be up there, but uh, Road Atlanta never surprises. Nope. So Eve Meyer going against, I mean, look at this. Eve Meyer started his day going against a champion, Michael Essa. Eve Meyer going against Ryan Turk, who, you know, has finished – I think his best was second, correct, or third? Um, at least last year was third. And then now he's going against uh, the defending champion, 
Von Gitt Jr. This is absolutely pinch me moment for uh, for the Drift Force BMW. We got Event Silberg. Have you tried announcing that Event Silberg? Nah, nah. <laughs> from Switzerland. I keep I keep that stuff to you. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, but uh, from Switzerland, Eve Meyer, an absolute gem. Him and Reynolds have been a great addition to the Formula Drift family. Great vehicles. And uh, speaking of Matt Field, uh, the Drift Cave has prepared those vehicles uh, the last couple of years. Von Gitt Jr. waits on the line. The Monster Energy NATO Tire Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D. Okay, Eve, here's your here's your possibility for an upset here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see what you can do. Absolutely. And if you want to drive Von Gitt Jr.'s car, you can in Torque Drift. So Von Gitt Jr. is in Torque Drift, so you can download the game, play for free. So uh, check it out on Android, PC, iOS. Play with 10 of your friends. It's awesome. Drive Von Gitt Jr.'s car. We are in the Link ECU Top 8, the Great 8. Link ECU, the official engine management unit of Formula Drift. Red lights are illuminating, and here we go. Let's send it. Von Gitt Jr., Eve Meyer. Never doing battle against each other as Von Gitt Jr. Goes towards the middle of the course, and as we said, the lead car has the right of way. Massive angle there for Von Gitt Jr. Lifting that front left tire. Oh man, Eve Meyer getting christened in smoke. Into that second outside zone. E oh, we got contact. Von Gitt Jr. stays in it. Woo, makes some noise, Atlanta. Wow, we got rubber on rubber contact, <laughs> but Houston, we do not have a problem. Eve takes one of those cones as a souvenir all the way home. Ryan, let's take a look at that again in the horseshoe. Uh, the, the, the Broncos, the Mustangs were bucking. That was a murderous run there by Von Gittin Jr. You can see the squat of the Mustang. He's back on throttle with massive angle through inside clip number one, then going up the hill. Let's take a look at this contact here, which Von, he doesn't even seem like he gets phased by it. And I thought maybe he had a broken part, and maybe he does uh, on the right front, but absolutely drives out of it like there's no issue at all. As he's transitioning right here, you can see he makes contact and just stays on the throttle like an absolute beast. Yeah. And then extends his gap to Eve with that, mis that apparent mistake that was made there. And Eve steals our cone all the way up to the start line. Here it is again. We're probably going to see a really good view of it here. Watch the right. Yeah. Oh, left front and right front collide pretty much head on as Vaughn was trying to manage his way to that inside clip. Wow. Crazy, man. Door to door, it says it on the roof of Eve Meyer, but it's wheel to wheel, face to face. Mono a mono. Look at that, Vaughn just pulling right back up. Take a lick and it keeps on ticking. And I know that Vaughn, you know, in the Advisable? Season, I mean, hey, it feels good. It feels good, right? So uh, I know they developed their suspension arms in the off season, they were really working on those things. A big C and C. I mean, they're 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 beasts. Like Gumby style, like you hit them and they just go they come right back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They 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 take a licking, man. But no, they're they're stout. They're really beautiful pieces of artwork. So, wondering if uh, Vaughn will call. Uh, and calling a comp. So yeah, it looks like they might be calling a competition timeout. Okay, cool. So no comp timeout was called because fault was deemed towards Meyer. So Vaughn is allowed to look at his vehicle without utilizing competition timeout. So uh, here is a look at the bracket. Matt Field is already in. We are halfway through the Gittin and Meyer battle. But uh, before we move on and find out what's going on, throw it down to Brett Nickel, who's with the Beast from the Bay. Well, Matt Field and I were just talking about the track and how technical it is. And going from outside zone one to two, it's a blind uphill. So Matt, what are your visual cues there? The visual cue starts at the transition after in a clip one. As soon as you get that transition done, your focus point is kind of where the horizon disappears, right? And we kind of see the bridge, we see the zone, and it's more or less, once you get into the zone, that's when you have to do whatever you do. Some people left foot brake, some people drive, grab the handbrake, just depends. So I kind of have found my marks of what needs to happen where, and I just try to do the exact same thing no matter what. Even if my instincts tell me otherwise, just do the same thing. Hey, Matt, thank you so much. Best of luck. Jared? Thank you, Lorette. And, uh, 
right? He just he just he seems like he has a different demeanor here, just uh, in in regards to just his demeanor. I don't know, just showing up here in 21. It's appropriate confidence ba yeah. based off preparation. I like it. That's a, that's a great elaboration there, Ryan. I like it. Well done. <laughs> well done. That, no, that, that summed it up perfectly. Because you can have inappropriate com you know, confidence. Why are you, like, staring right at me and seeming <laughs> that I have inappropriate <laughs> confidence? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Back to the second half of this battle. Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Eve Meyer. The second half of this battle. And Eve now will be out front with those menacing signature RTR LED grill lights in his rear view mirror. All right, the Type S lights are on, underglow. And now into that first front flip, here comes Eve Meyer. Vaughn Kitten Jr. chasing him down. Now pass, ooh, taking all the cones, eating them up like pack pellets. Now into that second outside zone. Eve does not get all the way out there, and that was a line he took with Vaughn Kitten Jr., and that's what actually caused the accident. So it looks like Vaughn maybe giving himself a little bit of room here and might search here towards the end. No, he does not, but he knows he has that kind of advantage, so didn't really need to apply the pressure too much. Well, the interesting thing about the contact is that it really didn't disrupt Vaughn at all, so no. it's not really going to be a major deduction for, for, um, for Eve. It's really going to be about how these two runs come together. Vaughn was not affected, and Eve was aggressive, yes, but what Eve did did not result in Vaughn making a big mistake. And so, you know, if Vaughn, if Vaughn was one of those guys that would have flopped in that situation, then we'd have a completely different yeah. scenario. But that's not what Vaughn does. So now the judge is going to be looking at both runs, how they both competed against each other, who hit the marks as the lead, who had the better chase run, looking at all those things overall, and then coming up with the winner. But it's a great battle overall. Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Eve Meyer putting on a show for everybody. And now we await the judges' results. I have to assume the needle is going to go the way of Gittin. But... Uh a, a great effort by Eve Meyer from Switzerland. Let's make it official. Slide him left for Giddin, and there it is. Vaughn Gittin Jr., defending and two-time Formula Jeff champion, gets the win and is moving on to the final four. Eve Meyer from Switzerland is knocked out. How are we doing out there, Atlanta? Make some noise. Still still stout crowd there, Ryan. That is, that is a, what do you say, Something about confidence? What are, something about confidence? Appropriate. Appropriate confidence. Thank you. All right. That is appropriate confidence. Hey, uh, my, my director wants to make sure you guys are still there. Are you guys still out there? Make some noise. I saw you, young man. You and the shaggy haircut on the fence. You got to make some noise, bro. Yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah, you just stood there. You just stood there, man. I, I need you to get hyped. This guy got his Aryan hat on. There you go. He, he got just, one All right. You. Yeah, just calm down, bro. Homeboy in the DC shirt. Who else we got out there? Hey, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, moms, grandmas. Happy Mother's Day. We got those royal purple, royal purple banger sticks. Oh, these guys slaying it. Big Jeff Gordon fan right there, getting after it. That was a crank. Ferda, doing it for the boys. I'm going to change your status to it's complicated. Thank you guys and gals for joining us out here as we are going to the other side of the bracket of the great eight. We are in the Link ECU grade eight. And we are overhead looking at Dean Carnage Carney, Jeff Jones. He's on the line, dude. Look at this. He says, I went through Osbo. We're getting ready to, again, you, you, you do know this, Ryan, that if he wins, he takes his Adderbrock supercharger off the car and takes it on the podium with him. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, so if he wins, they boop, 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 and they, they're taking the, the supercharger. And what's the backstory there? Just he loves the thing, and that's what got him to where he's at right that's now. That's how he gets it done. That's how he gets it done. I, I mean, the guy's so epic that it, it just <laughs> Does not totally, surprise it totally me. follows. Yeah. <laughs> Does not surprise me. Um, Dean Carnage Carney, I don't know what he's going to do. He's just uh, he's going to do backflips, and uh, he's going to shut down the bar. I think that's what he's going to do. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. Jeff Jones, 818 Brewing, Edelbrock, GT Radial. Then you got Dean Carnage, Carney, Oracle Lighting, Dodge Viper. All about Carnage with a K. Here we go. Jeff Jones will lead. Jones qualified 18th. Carney qualified 26th. He's one of those late eights. But now he's trying to berth a podium finish. Jeff Jones initiates into that first front flip. And Dean Carney comes in hot. Makes contact with Jones, but Jones stays in it. Now coming that first outside zone into that second outside zone goes Jones. 
look at Jeff Jones. Absolute beast. Coming through that touch and go, and then that final inside flip. Ryan Sage, a great battle here between Jones and Carnage. Oh, wow. What's going through your mind right now? You're just, you're just kind of looking at the screen. Well, I, okay, honestly, yeah. what's going through my mind is I was thinking back to Texas last year when we said, wow, Jeff Jones, he could potentially get his first podium. Yeah. And now we find ourselves in this same situation. Let's take a look at the run first. A little love tap there from Dean Carney. Stays in it, but Jeff Jones pushes. Has to do a little bit of braking there. Let's take a look at it again. This is where the D-cell zone ends right there at that inside clip. Jones is able to muscle through it. And now Kearney through the smoke line. Has to pull some angle out of the car to get back on it as Jones gets into outside zone number two. A little bit shallow. Pushes wide on that inside clip. That allows Dean to take a little bit of ground back. Now coming down the hill here is Dean eyeing him up, stay, smartly staying out of that smoke line, but he does miss the inside clip that Jones was able to get through, and, it, and we are seeing Jones pull off to the side there. I think he is gonna talk to his spotter and potentially uh, find out who was at fault for the contact. I, I'm pretty sure that it will be Dean, and that will be, allow Jeff Jones, just like Vaughn Gittin Jr., to take a look at the car. But at the same event in Texas, just going back yeah. to what we were talking about, yes. We also had LZ get very close to a podium as well. And so we find ourselves in a very similar situation here. That's We've right. got Jones, who you mentioned qualified 18th, LZ uh, 27. So we're going to start keeping an eye on these mm -hmm. because as we move into the final four, qualifying position will determine podium position for at least one guy. Yeah, that, that, that is absolutely correct. So, uh, yep. All right, while we get things sorted, you can see the fly over here of the hot grid area. We'll be right back. More action when we return here to Road Atlanta, the Royal Purple Road to the Championship, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. He and Odie Bakshis. Mm -hmm. So Odie Bakshis, Adam LZ, and Ryan, you, you talked about this earlier. Similar scenarios about Texas, LZ, and Jones. But here we go, right back, jumping into it. Odie Bakshis and Adam LZ. Two S15s, two very different builds. Oh boy, look at that nastiness. Oh. We got door to door, wheel to wheel, and LZ just absolutely slamming into the side of Odie Bakshis. Let's take a look at this. As a so let's see who is at fault here. I want to take a look at the instant replay. Saw a bit of an exchange there of Adam going up to the door of him. I don't know if it was a, a sorry or what the heck, or didn't, didn't see the. Uh, now I think this is LZ getting maybe a little bit overzealous here, and we know how challenging getting the timing right on initiation is. This is all a momentum zone here, right? The contact is made 25 feet, 20 feet before. So Odie is allowed to basically slow down there in order to get ready and be back on throttle by inside clip number one. I love the aggression here from Adam LZ. But you can see he's moving at a much quicker rate after initiation than Odie Bakhtis. And, and Odie really just had to buckle up and take that one. It's well before the first inside clip, so this shouldn't be too controversial here. The judge has been uh, basically talking about this all event long. But uh, let's get Ryan on while we've got a little bit of clear time. Judge Ryan Lantane, if we could uh, get you on real quick and turn your mic on. Uh, this one seems like a pretty clear-cut situation, but why don't you tell us uh, how you thought, how you guys thought about it, and uh, also what you think happened there with uh, Adam and Odie. You hit the nail on the head, Ryan. LZ just came in too fast. He wasn't really judging what Odie was doing in, in the lead position. You can see that he just came in way too fast. He didn't slow down enough, and maybe at least it was, the cars were parallel when they hit, you know? It wasn't a nose into a door or yeah. something. Um, but clearly there's some damage on both cars, so they're gonna have to look at that. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fault on Adam LZ. All right, so the play here is gonna be fault on Adam LZ. That means Odie will be able to uh, fix his vehicle without having to call a competition timeout. He will also be front loaded with 10 minutes to do that. Uh, and, if he, and depending on the damage for LZ, he either has to call a competition timeout or you know he may bow out of competition. There's a number of different op options available there. Nonetheless, the way it will go down the start line, and if, uh, if you can remember, we got that contact there, and we'll have to, this is the second run of this great eight battle. Who's moving on to the final four? 
So uh, we saw Jeff Jones initiate, and uh, Dean Carney, if you can recall, came in hot in that chase position. So the question is, you know, I, De Dean was at fault. So <laughs> look at the, guy, the guys having some fun in the back. Yo, the, jo the Jones gang. There's just Jones and just nothing like this. No, Jones is, Jones and his team are a different breed, man, and I and I think it's it needs to be celebrated. Here we go. Dean Carney out front. Jones in that chase position. Carney initiates massive angle there. Wow, that was very sick. Solid initiation there, but uh, Jones needs to get active. Oh, oh, and Dean goes over, sprays the dirt to the sand people right there. And look at Jones, Ryan. You don't give a lot of drivers nicknames, but you deemed him relentless years ago, and I think it just really summarizes who he is and his spirit. Oh, I'm definitely going to need to see that again, and probably the first run. Right. I need a refresher. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Let's go with a little side-by-side -side action. The BC Racing side-by-side -side instant replay. BC Racing, the official suspension of Formula Drift. Go for the gold. All right, so Jeff Jones and Dean Carney here, keeping us entertained into the night. Jeff Jones, Dean Carney, waiting at the line. We'll pull up some replays here. We've got two runs in the books now. We had a bit of a circumstance on run number one and a bit of a circumstance on run number two. <laughs> So they are not only keeping us entertained, they're also making it very difficult for this panel of three judges up here. But nonetheless, a great way to kick off the 2021 season. Still the other half um, of LZ and Odie to go, I believe. Yep, Odie and LZ, and they had that contact with LZ coming in hot. So a lot of these chase drivers absolutely going for it. All right, side-by-side side of that BC Racing, side-by-side, side, instant replay. All right, Jones on the left screen in the lead. Dean on the right. The lead run is on the left-hand side for Jones. That was the first lap, rather. That's where they got a little tight up there on the initiation. Jones shooting out wide in his lead run to get out to touch and go number one, but comes up short on outside zone number two. Goes wide on the clip as Dean in his lead run, trying to pull away from Jones, coming through the touch and going through this final snap here. And a tough battle here for the judges and getting some uh, news from the LZ camp here coming through. Want to wait yeah. for the official nature of it, but our task at hand is to find a winner between Jeff Jones and Dean Carney. All right, here's a look from the drones. This is the second run. So this is with Dean out front. Jones in the chase position. Now remember that contact made by Dean. Did Jones do enough? And Dean, you know, I mean, that's that's a deduction, but it's not incomplete. And and uh, Dean was looking really good up to that point, as you said. It's just a, a deduction, a mistake. His initiation, his angle, the flow that he carried through the first inside clip, all pretty solid. Pondering. 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 I see, I, I see one judge that's no longer <laughs> pondering. He's like, I got it. Scores are in. All of them are in. All right, here we go. Slide him left for Jones, right for Carney. We got it one more time from Eggert. And Lantain says Jones. And Brian says Jeff Jones gets the win. Jeff Jones is moving on to the final four. He qualified 18th. Odie Bakshi is qualified third. Adam LZ qualified 27th. Oh, Man, Ryan. Well, Ryan, I believe Lorette, Lorette just texted us and she sent us some news about what was to be the second half of our next and last battle of the Great Eight. Uh-oh, what but, do you got? But we are finding out that LZ was unable to repair his vehicle in the five minute allotment. Uh. So Adam LZ is out of competition. Odie Bakshis will advance into the final four. Odie Bakshis qualified third. Jeff Jones, the lowest qualifying driver. He needs to beat Odie in order to right. podium. Right. On that's the other the story. Yeah, that's the story that, like, I, I, you know, everybody likes an underdog. I don't consider Jeff Jones an underdog Not anymore, anymore, man. Not anymore. He took out Osbo. You know, he, he, you know, he gave it to Carney. 
you know, he has all the makings there. And, and you got to think also, is Odie 100%? You know, Jeff was down a cylinder. Right. Remember that? I right. mean, he called it. Oh, he, he used his comp timeout. Yeah. He used his comp timeout earlier. He didn't have to use one for this. So he's going to have this natural break that will happen here as we move back over to yeah. the left-hand side. Well, we, got, we have Odie. He has to run the second half of his battle. Yeah. Just to make sure the car runs. Yeah, we got that. So that's two minutes, right? A couple minutes. We we'll take a short break. There's Odie. He's navigating his way up to the start line. And then Field and Gittin. Field and Gittin. And then Jones we'll and Odie. The plot thickens. Underdog. Interesting. I'd love to know the history of how that. Every, everybody always says that. Yeah, is there I anything? Know. Is there such thing as an overdog? Or, or a, a reg, <laughs> That's just a, my dog. A regular dog? You're just my dog. You know what I mean? Here's <laughs> how it plays out. So we will see the second run of Odie Bakshis, but it is official. We'll see Odie rip through the course in his Falcon Tires field suspension S15. But there is your final four. Matt Field versus Vaughn Gittin Jr. Jeff Jones going against Odie Bakshis on the right side of the bracket. Jones, once again, he's peeking through the door of a podium, but he, because of his qualifying position, as you said, he's got to beat Odie. And you made a good point. Okay, let, let's, let's go to this interview. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Lorette Nickel is with Adam LZ. What's up, Adam? All right. Well, guys, uh, I was told Adam finished his right front The team was trying to finish the entire assembly. The look of defense. I'm so sorry, Adam. Sheesh. Uh, I mean, my guys, like, so close. We, we were, had maybe, like, two seconds to go. I mean, I, I didn't know I had to have the car running before the car was out. So even if, even if we made those seconds, um, the car wasn't running, so we would have lost anyway. But uh, uh, this was a great display. I mean, my team got the, a front corner change in five minutes. Um, not the best display of driving. I kind of went a little too fast. I should, probably should have not done that. I don't know. If you want to win, you got to go big, right? Absolutely. Adam, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Guys. Thank you, Lorette. Obviously, she's at the top of the hill. A little glitchy, but. Good attitude by him, though. Great attitude yeah. by him. I mean, and, and that's, that's just that. That, 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 what was the, the, the confidence thing again? Appropriate. Appropriate confidence. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it eventually by the end of the night. Appro appropriate confidence. Kind of digging it, though. What, appropriate confidence? Yeah, yeah I like it. <laughs> I, th I think that's, that's, the, that's the word of the day. Arr! Yeah, so, uh, all right. Let's, uh, speaking of screaming, let's hear this man scream down the hill. We're going to lay out so you can listen to this supercharged V8 under the hood of the Falcon Tire field suspension, Sylvia S15 of Edemus Odi Bakshis. Boy at Heat Wave, what's up, Justin? Thanks for tuning in, bro. If you haven't seen him, oh yeah. So, I know uh, they're feeling the heat wave. I know Justin is up in the Bay Area. The Bay Area boys got the shades on, ready to get tuned up. Matt feeling the flow, feeling the vibe, but he's going against that man, Von Kitten Jr., two-time and defending Formula Drift champion. But, I, but again, just, just the, the, the attitude, the attitude of, of the confidence, the justified confidence <laughs> as, uh, as, as Field and Gittin are warming up their respective tires. <laughs> That's a cool one, too. Yeah, justified confidence. Yeah, we have, we have too They have like fun. a sick album title. Justified confidence? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Like if you're claiming hard a little yeah. bit. Yeah, like, mm, just like confidence. I got no, but. Yeah. yeah, like, uh, yeah, like humble confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most humble guy I know. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, dude, that's what's up. All right, here we go. All joking aside, it's always great to be back here wrapping out alongside Ryan Sage and Laurent Nickel, our judges, our whole crew. It's great to see the family. The band's back together, baby. And the front and center, the singers, the musicians, the bands. Vaughn Ginn Jr. and Matt Field right now are center stage. Matt Field will lead. He's your number one qualifier. Vaughn Ginn Jr. qualifying fourth. Still in the 90s, but just not enough. And that could come into play here to, uh, you know what? Actually, no, no, I was going to say one of these guys are guaranteed third place, but that's not the case because Odie did qualify in between them. So it's a, it's a must win for Vaughn Gitt Jr. in order, no, not the case even there either. Here we go, Matt Field and Vaughn Gitt Jr. The scenarios play out as the tires burn on. Matt Field initiates into that front clip. Right there, look at him. That field just wraps it around, that front clip. Now going to that first outside zone, some wavering by both the drivers in that second outside zone. Right there, riding the line is, woo, oh, doctor, look at this. Both these guys showing up toe to toe, mono and mono, body parts being shredded off, shredded to send it to end it. Matt Field and Vaughn Ginn Jr. putting on an air show, wow. Loving that. Great way to kick off the final four. Matt Field, number one qualifier. Vaughn Ginn Jr., number four. And the current champion, Matt, Thro Matt Field, trying to dethrone Vaughn Ginn Jr. Super close action coming up the hill with Matt Field shooting into outside zone number two, right at the edge of the track. But Vaughn following him perfectly through outside zone two into the inside clip. Oh, a little bit of a, a, a washout there by Vaughn, but he corrects very quickly, gets back on it. A great shot from above to see that little correction that Vaughn made. Here it is coming out of the keyhole one more time, or going into the keyhole, rather. Matt Field super deep on that outside zone. Look at Vaughn with the pressure, unbelievable. And then right there, just a slight little adjustment. You can see the front wheels moving. This is a dangerous area, that smoke line. Very important to stay out of it. Vaughn navigates through it pretty well. And now we will switch things up. Wow. The two-time champion, Vaughn Gittin Jr. at the lead. Yep. Trying to make history in 2021. Wants to get that third. Wants to tie James Dean. Wants to tie Chris, Chris Forsberg. Forsberg. Matt Field, number one qualification. Wants a championship of his own. They meet in the final four. They give us an awesome first half. And here's the second. Awesome driving by both these gentlemen. Who's going to come in on top? Vaughn Gittin Jr. gets the clean air behind the wheel of his Ford Mustang. And Matt Field hunting him down. Von Kitt Jr. initiates, big angle from Von Kitt Jr. Look at that, he's got that back right tire, Ryan, your point now. Did it go flat? I don't know, that thing looks, oh, it looks like he's on rim potentially, but if he finished, he might have defeated, but if he finished, oh boy, and there it goes. It debated on initiation, yep. and it's, it's fine <laughs> in terms of uh, can finish he finish the finish in the run, because it's the second half yep. of the battle. Yes. But obviously, it doesn't look like he was able, well, and Matt got really close there yep. too. Uh, it can't ever be easy. No, <laughs> uh, but, but, but I, do, I do believe that with that, when he transitioned, because what was that? It was a, it's that. It's the right rear. Right rear. So when he came down, okay, here watch, we go. Watch it right here. It goes Boop. off right there. Yep. As, he's, as he's hitting the e-brake, it pops off the rim. So, I mean, sometimes they can kind of pop back on and you can still maintain some grip, but let's see, it's off completely there. So. He's got basically metal to asphalt, and you have to think that that is playing a role in the ability to put down power in the appropriate way. The judges will have to make an interpretation and a call on this section of the course. Now remember, the decel zone is passed. Right there, they should be accelerating through that inside clip. There it is in slow motion, you can see. There it is, yeah, locking it up, bye. <laughs> yeah, I go bye bye. Yeah. Wow. Tire went to heaven. So as they transition here, you got to think that trying to put that power down. Kind of pop back on for a second. Yeah. And then it's like, nah, I got to get going. Nah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head out. <laughs> so now you can see him just staying on it. E-brake. Matt's taking a, a tighter line. You got to think that, that moving forward, oh, boy. Okay. The plot thickens. You don't want to have it easy. Nope. 
Yeah, I, I'm, that's that's what I'm thinking. I'm overhearing the, the judges talking, and I think Ryan's microphone might even be open. Yeah. I think yeah. You, you, that, that has to factor in into the overall interpretation. I hear Ryan putting his mic on. Let's open him up. Tell us what you guys have been talking about, Ryan. Yeah, right away we saw that Vaughn's tire initiate, uh, debuted on initiation, and the amount of grip these tires produce, if you're down one tire, you're clearly going to be having trouble uh, maintaining the amount of speed and uh, pace throughout the course that you'd expect a lead car to do. And then as uh, they came up here towards inside clip number two, you could see that Vaughn uh, over-rotated, clearly caused by the lack of one of the tires on the car. As you were saying, metal on asphalt. So uh, Matt Field, I think, made a very light contact with him. I didn't deem it to be Matt Field's fault at all. And uh, I, I, I put it on Von Gittin. It's clearly not Von Gittin's fault, but he had a tire debeat. So that's Th what's at fault for this. That's going to change the complete attitude of the vehicle. So Absolutely. Yeah, so here's what they said. And Matt Field gets the win. He's going to the finals. Matt Field is guaranteed at minimum second place here in Atlanta. Juan Sun, the number one qualifier. Can he make it a perfect event? That is the big thing, right? As, man, perfect event for Matt Field. Great way to start it. And there we can see Chelsea Denofa, Lorette Nickel up there in the pits. And the RTR camp looking on. So Field, so where does that put us? That puts us basically, the other side is Jones and Odie. If, if Jones loses, Von Gitt Jr. gets third. Right. If Odie wins, Von Gitt Jr. gets, no, sorry, yeah. If, if, if Jones, Jones if, if, yeah, <laughs> sorry, if Jones wins, if Jones wins, Odie gets third. I apologize. Correct, correct. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. If Odie wins, Vaughn gets third. Thank you. That's how we're doing it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, some people have, have lost some money here today. Their bets uh, went south. But regardless, you know who's, uh, who's going to win right now? No, I have no idea. Us? Us. We're all going to win. That's, that's a great way of putting it. Jones and Odie. Bakshis. Oh, man, this should be fun. You know, you just got to gotta think that we were talking about just the, the confidence, but I think just the zaniness and the, and the fun having that Jones is having and his team, I think that's really just keeping him cool, calm, and collect. Yeah, totally. Like Keeping it uh, loose, fun, happy, smiling. There's something Dancing. to be said about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, there's a you know, a fine balance of the seriousness of competition and being able to have fun. I mean, drifting is fun by its very nature. Fact. And uh, that's what makes it such a beautiful sport. It's cool that it's also a competition because you have both of those elements. And now we're putting ourselves in a position where one of these two guys is going to be going to the finals. Is it going to be Odie Bakshis or is it going to be Jeff Jones? Here we go. Odie Bakshis out front. Jeff Jones in that chase position, the first portion of this battle. Matt Field waits in the wings as Von Gittin Jr. does it well. Will he get third place or will he get fourth? Odie Bakshis coming down the hill in that Falcon Tires field suspension S15. Here comes Jones in tow. Odie brings it around that first front clip. Well executed by both the drivers. Couple car length distance in between the two drivers. First outside zone, now the second outside zone. Jones taking a tighter line. Ooh. Look at that, wheel to wheel. Good transition, now coming out of the keyhole. Jeff Jones make a small correction, straightens out, now back up the hill. Odie and Jones, no major mistakes from either driver. I think Odie had a really good lead run. Jeff had some corrections in the back, in that chase position. Now, if I'm Jones, I got to run the run of my life. I know Odie is going to chase me down. Yeah, that is something that we expect from Odie Bakhtis to be an aggressive chase driver. But here he is in the lead, laying down a solid, clean lead run. Fulfilling that first outside zone. Getting pretty much to the edge of the second outer zone. But Jones, no slack here. Surging in moments, pushing the pace on Odie. Yet, like you said, a couple little mistakes, a couple areas we had a little bit less angle, but he still kept and stayed in the fight. So now he's got to switch up the mentality. Go from the chase mentality to the lead run. I've got the clean air. Let me put down the run of my life. And Odie Bocchis, we know what he can do in the chase position. Jeff is buzzing right now. He's absolutely frothing. He is just, he, he wants this on so many levels. I know I saw his wife, she's here, and she says, I can, you know, I can work remotely. I'm trying to, you know, just be, be here, be present. And 
Jones is going for it. But I know, you know, Amy, Odie's, Odie's wife, she's here in the building. She's loving it. She's back. And it, it's, it's great, man. This is just all one big happy family. But one of these gentlemen is going to the finals. Guaranteed a podium spot. Here we go. Send it. Jeff Jones coming down the pipe. Odie Box, he's right there. That's what I was talking about. And that's to be expected. Jones and that 818 Edelbrock. Z coming into that second outer zone. Just barely dips that back left wheel into that second outside zone, transitioning out of the keyhole and through that touch and go. Oh, great transition by both the drivers. Jeff was a little off that touch and go run. Awesome driving by both the drivers. Well, a great battle here in the final four. Well done by both drivers, as you said, but let's take a little bit more of a granular look here. Jones, nice early initiation on the throttle through that inside clip. Odie, always a beast in the chase, keeping it close, going uphill. One of the hardest parts of the course to time to get to outside zone number two. But Odie moving quickly here to make sure that he's following Jones like a moving clipping point, trying to mirror him the best that he can and look for areas where he can dive in the pocket there, keep the pressure on. Jones out front following most of the criteria of the lead driver and giving us a great battle to consider here at Road Atlanta in the final four. Oh, man. Let's see what we got. Again, Matt Field waits in the wings. So if Odie wins, Von Kitten Jr. gets third. If Jeff Jones wins, Odie gets third. What do you guys think? Is it Odie Bakshis? Or is it Jeff Jones? Or is it one more time? Y'all getting loud. I can't hear you. Where are my Odie fans at? Where are my Jeff Jones fans at? Where are my one more time fans at? Slide him left for Jones, right for Odie Bakshis. Odie gets the win and is advancing on. So the finals are set. The finals are set. Matt Field, Odie Bakshis are in the finals. That means Vaughn Kitten Jr., that man's wearing the right shirt if he was pulling for Vaughn. Vaughn Kitten Jr. gets third place here in Atlanta. This is uh, Team Falcon striking back. Ooh, yeah, that's right. One, two, Falcon Shot one, two. Shot over the bow. Yeah, shot over the bow. So there it is. What an epic day. Look at these battles. And it ends up the teal and blue on top. Oh, look at this. The frenemies. The frenemies are at the top. Oh, field, wow. field and Odie, right? I a mean, lot of been, connections there. They've been doing this series for a while. They've been having fun. They've been, they've been making a lot of content together. And, and here they are. And I think it's going to be no holds barred. These guys are going to have an absolute blast. They've been, you know, testing, ripping, shredding together and uh, ripping in the tear. And, man, it's going to go down. Yeah, no kidding. It's going to be a great battle. These two guys well-deserved. Field has been on a tear all weekend. You tend to see these kind of things happen more often than not. A guy that, num that qualifies number one at least makes it to the finals and if not wins the event. That's something yep. that Matt Field has yet to do, but he is on the cusp of doing it. On the other side of the bracket, you have a guy – that has come out as a championship contender for the past few years. He's always in the hunt. Didn't have the finish that he wanted last year towards the end of the year, but everything was so crazy last year. Now he's reset, he's got an incredible car, and this should be a battle that we will all remember for a long time. Yep, yep, yep. And it's just that number one qualifier, taking that, having that perfect event, not many drivers can actually execute that. And that's, you know, that's, that's just, again, I really attribute that to just how calm he is. So speaking of the calmness, How's, uh, how's Matt Field faring down there, Lorette? Well, I just asked him, Matt Field, what's changed? And he Come said on. secrets. <laughs> He's not going to give away any of, any of his secrets, but Matt Field. It's all a mind game. That's it. That it's is. A absolutely, it's a mind game. So long and I'm trying to figure out my mind game. I'm not going to say I figured it out quite yet. Okay. It's a long road. But uh, definitely making improvements, and I'm happy to be here. And that's rare. It's hard. It's hard for us to be happy or excited about being here because we're all so cutthroat. So that's where I'm at. What else can you pinpoint that's working so well for you tonight? Honestly, <laughs> shameless plug, the tires. Like, okay. these Falcons are incredible. 295, aired down, temperatures cool off. I'm driving a car that surprises me how much grip it has. 
when it was sunny out, I was kind of searching a little bit, and as soon as it cooled off, the car just started hooking up. I'm doing wheelies up the hill, so I'm pumped. And let's talk about that. So now with the sun down, the track cooling down, what adjustments had did you have to make? Well, normally you loosen up the car when the sun goes down. We gripped it up, and I just said, drive better. That was it. As simple as that. He makes it sound so simple, you <laughs> I'm trying, guys. I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> and you're going against your Falcon Tire teammate. Yes. Do you know what to expect with him? That's the thing. We drive together so much that there is no games. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. It's 100% from the second we leave the gate. Uh, that's how we practice, you know, 200 laps on a, on a normal test day between him and I. So it's going to be real. That's for sure. And that must inspire a lot of confidence. Oh, absolutely. I know how he drives. He knows how I drive. For instance, following Vaughn into that keyhole, I knew that there was going to be a slow up at Interclip 2, and there was. So knowing that that doesn't exist with Odie means I can just be on his door, and I'm sure he feels the same. Okay, I know you have to get ready, Matt Field. Thank you so much for your time. Jared? Thank you so much, Lorette. And uh, I'm just coordinating with Larry Chen right now. He says, hey, ATL, you guys want to do that light thing again. So we'll, we're, we're going to light up the night here when the cars are on the track. So don't, don't pull out your phones and your lights just yet. When, uh, when Odie and Field are on the track and they're running down, I need you to light up the track because Larry Chen is down on the ground. He's going to grab that. He's going to grab that as the stormtroopers look on. These are not the droids you're looking for. Thank you for joining us out here. As a, may the fourth be with you. Revenge of the fifth. And our number one qualifier, the finals area. Everybody, turn on your phone lights. Let's light this place up. Turn on your phone lights. Hey Let's light it up. Larry Chen going to snap the picks. Larry, you ready, buddy? Little baby send. Let's send it! Atlanta, line up the night. The finals are here. It's a Falcon 1 2. In which order are they going to land? Matt Field, the beast of the day, the bay initiates. Thrown into that first front clip. Odie Bakshi's right there on the back. Oh! Odie Bakshi lunges forward, gets in to the side of Matt Field. You see him go on the opposite side. The accident happens. And the Carbon Kevlar body kit. Uh, lands right in front oh man we got side skirts front bumpers we got it all that was interesting how did he go on that side Odie says look I need damage on this side too let's just go and throw it on that side <laughs> well we know these guys come out aggressive and this is a course where you're going really fast and slow then really fast again then slow then really fast again and these kind of things can happen in areas like that now remember that's a diesel zone that's a diesel zone that's not a diesel zone that's not a diesel zone that's not a diesel zone the D-cell zone starts there, and then it goes up to the start of outside zone number two. So just for the record, that's how the track is laid out. They even touched, they kissed. I think Odie transitioned a little quickly there. Yeah. Well, it was it was like sh it was a shallow transition. So here's looks like they did kiss there, and then yeah, I think he just gripped up and it shot him to the to the right side as opposed to kind of getting loose and, and dropping in a formation. So interesting, let's take a look back um, at Odie. He has not used a competition nope. timeout. Field, no, field has not used a competition timeout, so they both have one. We will need to get fault because this is now deemed as a collision because the run stopped. Yep. So fault has to happen here. Uh, we, we typically will also do fault if there's just contact which means the run doesn't necessarily stop, just in case there is a damaged part that, that we don't see and it becomes a safety issue. But in this case, where it is completely stopped, it goes into the collision category. We need to deem fault, and then it would be an incomplete for one of the drivers. That's the big thing that happens in a collision is that the run stops, and that means that somebody caused that accident, that collision, and will be deemed with an incomplete. Here's another look at the momentum zone. You can see clearly the touch and go area where this happened. Um, is not a momentum zone. So that means drivers need to be maintaining speed through there. Now, I, I think you're right, Jared. I think your read on initially is there was a bit of a shallow transition from Odie and he kind of gripped up and Boop. came forward. But uh, have the judges made a call? Yeah, the judges made a call. Who's at fault? Say it again. Fault on Odie. Was that unanimous? Fault is on Odie. All right, yeah, so. Fault is on Odie, so that means Matt Field can put hands on the car and inspect the vehicle. So the fault is on Odie, so Field can put the hands on the car. If, if Odie wants to get hands on his vehicle, he would have to take it and utilize his competition timeout. Yeah, that is correct, and we are 
in a pretty clear situation here where there's a clear advantage for Matt Field with Odie Bocchis getting fault for the collision and being awarded an incomplete. So that means that Matt Field would need to also incomplete on his chase run uh, in order for there to be the possibility of a one more time. However, uh, two incompletes on a chase run mean we could revert to the lead as a comparison, but let's take a look at it again here. So they do kiss on initiation right here. Yeah, little, they kiss little. here. Field is on throttle well before the inside clip, and then Odie's gonna quickly transition a bit early there, and that's where you see the contact. Can we roll that back just real quick one more time? Uh, I wanna just take a look at one little item just for my own edification, if you will. Well, all the lights were on, but uh, they lit up and the boys got lit. The hype of the finals. Yep, the hype of the finals. And and Matt talked about it. We didn't have, Lorette didn't have words with Odie, but he says, you know, we've driven together, there's no foul play, we know what, what to expect. And inspecting the corners. There we are overlooking, is that, uh, is that Odie's vehicle? Man, they are working in the dark over there. Absolute pitch black. Fortunately, they got that type S lighting, right? So one half of the battle is completed. Odie at fault, that means he's at a deficit. Matt Field is one half of a battle left and he is going to win here in Atlanta, which I don't think he has won before here. I think you're, no, Odie? No, I'm saying, I'm oh. saying Field because Odie's at fault. Field has never won here before. Right. I believe right. Odie has. Yeah, he has won here. Yes. I remember um, Ron Bergenholtz cried that night. Ah. Uh, He's yep. strong. Yep. Field is uh, focusing on his right rear, possible bent arm. So uh, that, that could play a major role here. He does have 10 minutes because of... The, the contact and the collision, as you called it, as opposed to a competition timeout. Because he wasn't at fault, it's a 10-minute allotment. Competition timeouts are just five-minute allotment. And, and this is digging deep into the rule book, um, but this is something that we've had in here in the mm -hmm. rule book for a couple of years for situations like this, is that, um, and I want to go back and do a quick refresher on it, but I do not believe that you can win the finals, um, that we will wait under if fault. It, yeah, I, that we will wait and give additional time so that we can see the conclusion of the finals um, unless the driver at fault has to bow out of competition. Right, right. So we can see uh, the Drift Force boys down there helping as well. Yeah, so you can see that is the hot pit area that's you know at the top of the hill. So they take any necessary tools and, and parts they have what's, uh, what's called parts boards where they have corners of the vehicle. A lot of the teams have, have utilized this for numerous years, but parts boards. So that, that right corner, the left front, right front, whatever you got. So as you uh, can see, Lorette Nickel down there. Hopefully we can get some words with Matt Field. And uh, Lorette, go ahead. Down to you, girl. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hopefully you can hear me. There's a lot of cars and a lot of uh, things in the way, but Matt Field sitting in the car and there's been some damage to the right side. So tell us what the team is working on fixing. Right, so, right, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> right now, uh, it's actually this piece called a tow control plate. And it's basically a sacrifice piece that Part Shop Max builds into their knuckle so that we don't destroy a very expensive billet knuckle. So fortunately, just that plate took the hit we pull it off, bolt a new one on, check the alignment, and send the car on its way. So this is the first time with this new piece that we've tested, uh, and I guess it's working. I can't see. I'm dying to see, but the boys got me. I trust them. All right, Matt, thank you so much. Nice. nice. Very good brief interview. Thank you, Lorette, for some insight there. And then shout out to Part Shop Max, right? And that's, that's uh, kind of keeping the damage at bay and minimizing the costly parts because like you said, that big billet piece. And look at that, boom, like an absolute F1 NASCAR team. So, you but get, uh, what's that? Yeah, you, you wanna get appropriate uh, confidence, you wanna get intelligent parts. Let's go, and, yeah, that's right, appropriate confidence, baby. When we come back, we will see Matt Field and Odie Bakshis finish out the finals here at Michelin Race 1. Formula Drift champion will be crowned. So the clock is ticking, the car is not moving, maybe just uh, aligning it. I think they're just checking the alignment and I think that's smart. Take the time, you have the 44 seconds and it should be good to go. 
seeing uh, what's going on here. All right. Uh, hey, uh, Lorette, throwing it I down to you. Do they have more time outside of this? I guess they could take five more minutes, huh? He, he could call his competition timeout, which would give him five more minutes. Uh, the clock is running down. You can see 24 seconds left. It looks like the guys were uh, measuring the toe. Right now, they're working on the front right tire. Matt told me he got hit hardest in the back, um, so it might be all set, but Kevin Wells holding the clock right now. Seven seconds, and uh, my assumption is that they're going to call the five minutes. All right, yeah, it looks like uh, that clock has expired, so boom, the five-minute clock there it is. does begin. So five-minute allotment on top of that 10-minute because, again, the contact, the collision, 10 minutes was allotted, and now not now he's utilizing the competition timeout, the whole team. You can see them working on it. Ryan, what do you got? Well, I was just I was wanting to reference that uh, section in the rule book that talks about this specific things, this specific thing. Um, it's in 5.1.3. It says, uh, in the case where you have a situation in the final battle where a driver uh, has excessive damage to his vehicle uh, and, and we want to finish the event uh, so that way the lead driver like, can't take advantage of this rule, hey, I, right. know, I know I'm not at fault you know, and, and not fix their car, yeah. that we reserve the right to give them more time to fix the vehicle. If the car is completely smashed up and like, totally trashed, then they would call it, and, and you know, then Matt would get the win in that situation. But the way that the rule is written here is it says, if the case above occurs in the final battle, Formula Drift reserves the right to make adjustments to the rule uh, above in order to complete the competition. Example, allow additional time beyond the 10 minutes for repairs. Got it. So we kind of have that in there. I know Kevin uh, knows that. I believe that they are... They obviously, they're not super rushing, so I think that they're confident they're going to be able to get it back out there. And obviously, Field doesn't want to win it by sitting on the sidelines. No, no, most definitely not. And, and this isn't something that Odie wanted to, to happen either. I know we're focusing on Matt Field, but I believe that we haven't, we haven't checked in on Odie. I don't know if he called the comp timeout either or as well, excuse me. But, you know, I know that the teal and blue teams are working, so the clock is ticking for Matt Field, but you brought up a great point. They're not thrashing. You can see the alignment tools there on the wheels, making sure everything is up to snuff. And looks like just rolling it, seeing. Check it one more time. Fire her up, let her rip, tater chip. That's right. All right, there it is. Matt Field is rolling, makes some noise, Atlanta. Don't stop believing, that's right, Brooks. Don't stop believing. That is right, Brooks Church in the building. Thank you, sir. He is a fun haver for sure. Just a small town boy, you know what I mean? Living in a lonely world. All right, Matt Field, you can see Von Gittin Jr. He knows he's got third place, but who's gonna get the win? So with that contact of Odie and Field, Odie sits with the deficit. Field with some confidence, feeling the flow. It's all mind games, as he says. Yeah, the tricky part here is you know Odie's going to get out of the gate fast. So Field doesn't really have the ability to kind of sit back and sandbag this one okay. because he could be inactive chase. Yeah. Interesting thing is, is how much damage was sustained that may have an effect on the run for either drivers. That's always a hard thing to kind of tell from our perspective. Something you can't see. Yeah. I mean, he talked about that, you know, the, the development of that suspension bit by Part Shop Max to not sustain damage, mitigate damage, and make sure that you're not, you know, having to replace that full corner. Um, but the problem is there's that, you know, it's it's not the $1,000 part that usually breaks. It's usually the 10 cent part that breaks. Yeah. That, that'll end up yeah. getting you. You know what I mean? That's like that's like Gucci in his in his line. You know, he didn't right. have any power, and it was just a dumb a dumb line that that popped off. We can't allow that. No, no. <laughs> higher tiered vibes. Higher tiered vibes, my friend. Did we confirm if uh, if Matt Field? I again, I really want to go out on a limb and say that I believe he has never won here at Atlanta. In terms of con terms of confirmation, uh, I'm going to say that that's pretty certain. Yeah. All right, so again, let's get those uh, let's get those lights up once again. We got a packed house. Adam Jabay's tuning in. Jababy, how we doing, buddy? Adam Jababy tuning in. 
Thank you guys and gals, all of you for watching. We still have uh, still have a packed house here. Yeah, let's let's pull out those uh, let's pull out those lights. Turn them on Saturday night. Yeah. You ain't got anywhere else to go but here. So light up the night. Get those camera phone camera lights going. The phone lights. Yeah, Matt Fields' only win came in 2016, Texas and Irwindale. Trying to get that triple. Yeah. Would love to see that for Matt Fields. So, again, light up the night. Here we go. Larry Chen with the flicks. Baby send. Spicy Leaf. Jammer. What would, what would it be? Joner Bams. Let's go. Chris Ewell, Joner Bams. Is that, is that a sufficient? Here we go. Send it for the finals. Odie Bakshis out front. Matt Field in the chase position. Who's coming out on top? Odie missing some of those carbon Kevlar bits. Wraps it around that front clip. Gets a little closer. Doesn't have that bump oh. on. Oh! And look at this oh, big no. angle. Matt Field with a big correction. Oh, boy. And Matt Field. Oh, no. Is that completely incomplete? Kind of came out of power. And now coming back down the hill. Guys, is that an incomplete? But the contact, Ryan. I hear you screaming, hooting, and hollering. Is that enough? Wow. I, I mean, this is a weird, a weird situation because the incomplete by Odie comes in the chase. Matt Field couldn't finish his lead run, so they don't have a lead run to compare. If the two incompletes in the chase are in fact legit, uh, Odie had one for hitting Matt. Right now, let's take a look at Matt in in the chase. Oh man, this is getting interesting. We thought it was over. Matt Field right there, brings Angle out of the car, and then again coming up the hill, he understeers for a second. The car is struggling. The car is struggling, and Matt, in this critical part right there, he understeers, loses some angle. So the question is, and that one was that a little enough? bit more extreme, the question is, is that an incomplete? Because if it's an incomplete, both drivers in the chase have incompletes. Odie, hit Matt so he didn't have a lead run that the, that the judges could compare it to. Somebody help me. <laughs> <laughs> help me. Help. Help. The judges oh, are man. deliberating right now, and they're analyzing just as hard as you are. Oh, man. The, fan, the fans don't want to go home. The fans are screaming. All right, what do you guys think? Do we have a winner? Yeah. Is it Field? Is it Odie? What do you guys think? Where are my Odie fans at? Where are my Matt Field fans at? Who thinks they should go one more time? So. Here we go to the judges. Survey says, gotta guess be what? Me. You gotta be kidding me. You know if this shows up, they're going one more time. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Wow. They're going at it again. Look at it. Matt Fields' team is smiling. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that was silly. Silly. Yeah, they got to get some fresh rubber underneath and Falcon tires being absolutely abused. There we go. Children of all ages. Oh, she's oh, so she, sad. She's, she was a field. She's a Matt Field fan. She's bummed. She's 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 bummed about it. So they are going at it again. They'll throw some fresh Falcons underneath the vehicle. I mean, look, you, you can see the traffic over there. If you haven't seen it already, we ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Rutledge, I'll be there. I'll be there soon, buddy. Might be around 1 a.m. though. <laughs> Local time 10:20. When we come back, the one more time battle between the frenemies. Are they friends? Are they enemies? A little bit of both. They're frenemies. Odie Bakshis, Matt Field. The finals continue here at round one of the Formula Drip Pro Championship. And we are back, baby. Can you feel the heat wave? Yeah, the sun is set, but whew, you can feel the heat coming off that car. These two drivers. Both of them just had some flubs talking with their spotters, Chow and Amy, and it's like, what's up? And I don't know. They just they just didn't have it. They, you know, Field kind of fell on his face there in that chase run, and ah, not to, not not the way you want to get it done. So let's see a clean, fair fight, fellas. Let's see what we got, you frenemies. 
Looks like somebody, are they on the phone? What's going on here? Uh, I don't know. Call me maybe. There's no major activity going on with Field. Does it look like he's changed his tires? Is that, is that it, Shredder? It was his headset that was reflecting. That's what Rip, I looked like. Ripper, Ripper just checking the lugs. No, they are pulling them off, so they haven't changed the tires yet. Obviously, this is the finals. We'll, we'll give them opportunity to breathe here. You know, they may have had to what, – what may have happened here is they ran out of the tire allocation, and they may have had to go get tires from, oh, wow. some, from somewhere else. That, that is not uncommon because of the way that tire allocations work. Okay, what's going on here? So we're seeing – oh, so yeah, yeah, there, there, there they go. are. They went and got. Yeah. Like, hey, we got to get more. Yeah. Check these out. Okay. Well, I'm seeing some on the, on the truck there. Are those used? They might be used, huh? So, yeah, strapping on some freshies. Get some new Falcon meat hooks. Ryan, just a little, little calm right now. Just, you know, just, just chilling, just hanging. You know? As soon as they drop that thing down, though, it's go time. So fresh and so lean, lean. Yep. Brand new wheel sponsor for Matt Field, Forge Star. So on Air Raid, you can see all the sponsors there. RTS, Texas Speed. Met the Texas Speed dudes in, uh, at Cletus McFarland at the, Freedom at the Freedom 500. The Texas Speed dudes were out there. Good cats. Ryan, uh, it's funny because I listened to the Maxim Driftcast. Um, I, my money was kind of on Odie. I said, well, I said Chelsea. I think Odie's gonna is hungry. Matt's always kind of a I don't want to say a dark horse, but he's just always this kind of like hey, like pops up out of the corner, like hey, what's going on, guys? Like that. I feel like that's kind of his style. And it, I don't th want to say he comes out of nowhere, but on the Maximum Driftcast podcast, they didn't talk about him until like the last ten minutes. They're like, oh yeah, uh, we didn't talk about like Matt Field at all, and and here he is in the finals. Yeah. So I, 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 think, I think that's interesting. All right, we got all, we got all this teal and blue, but let's talk to another teal and blue driver. Lorette Nichols with JTP. Well, JTP is down, well, up here in the hot pits, and there is so much craziness and chaos going on. Can you attribute that to the first round butterflies? I, I don't even know. Like, it was just like, it's wild, you know, a couple of Falcon cars like smashing into each other. We were down there with Odie, like helping his team put that car back together. I don't know really what happened with Matt with like the whole tire situation, but yeah, I think it's just like, we're all trying to get back in the swing of things. We haven't really, I mean, last year was just weird. Yep. And like, this is the first time in a year and a half that it feels like somewhat normal. So it's, it's good, but on the other hand, like, like you said, it's probably like the butterflies, like everybody's so excited and they don't really know what to do. And I don't know, man, it's, it's wild, but it's, it's just good to be back here. Now, how do you guys all, and I know I'm asking you to, to speak for the entire field, but how do you reset and get ready for Orlando so none of this chaos happens? You know, I'm just so, like, our weekend started out a little crazy. I got hit, uh, like, bent a knuckle. By mistake, we didn't have a spare, so we were able to run to a local shop. I used a press to press the knuckle, like, straight again, and then we ran into a, a throw-out bearing issue in qualifying, so we had to drop the transmission out. I had to rebuild the throw-out bearing, get it ready for today, and then everything kind of worked out. We had some, like, good battles and, and just getting things back together, but honestly, I'm just glad I get to drive the car into the trailer. It's all in one piece. Everything's working really good now and not like it did beginning of this weekend. Some of these guys, they got a lot of work to do. Well, Justin, I sure appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Jared. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, I, I like J JTP stance. I like that. He's like, my car's clean. It's good. Some dudes, they got some work to do, and that's a short two weeks. So there it is, the one more time. Odie Bakshi, Matt Field. Uh, Larry, Larry, did you get the shot? I mean, these, these fans are going nuts. Hey, Atlanta, who's still out there? I can't hear you. Whoa. Listen to that. I, I, can barely, I can barely see him. Show yourself. Let me see your lights again. Show, show yourself out there. I, I, can't, I can't see. I see one, two billion stars of light. Look at this. Okay, I see a couple royal purple banger sticks out there. See some lights. See some strobes. Yeah, looks good. Okay, yeah, right on. Thank you, guys and gals, for sticking around. Hardcore fans. 
So uh, are we all going to the Waffle House after this or what? All-star special, scattered, capped, covered, right? Scattered, so my move is, so it's scattered, so smothered is cheese, right? Covered, cubed, chunks, and then capped. I like the shrimp. I like the shrimp. Here we go. Here we go. That is Matt Field and Hody Klopsky. Nice job there by Matt Field on initiation going to that first outside zone. Into the second outside zone. Both these guys are dialed. Rip Roar ready to go into the keyhole. Around that front clip, out of the keyhole, both these drivers go. Now down into that touch and go in that final clip. Looks like we got a full pull here, Ryan. Look at that. Oh, just as I say that. Odie Bakshi overshoots, two tires off. I think, oh, it boy. Was, I think it was past the finish line. It was past the finish line. I was over here busy talking about the dub house, the old Waffle House, man. Wow, all right. Wow. Well, Matt Field looks like he's back in charge here. Nice initiation. You can see e-brake pull, but he's back on throttle just right at that inside clip. Odie was making the right adjustments, but he went a little bit long as he was making the approach to the first inside clip. Now Matt Field gets through that zone. Odie keeping the pressure on, using the grip of that S15 to charge back at Matt Field. Good transition through the smoke line. Here comes Odie. Look at that right in the pocket there. Battle on hands here going into the night as we try to finish up Road Atlanta. And that was right at the finish line. <laughs> that was Sketchball Woo! 5000. Hey, -o. Ske Sketchy Odie. All right. Are we going to get a winner? What do you think, Insta Steve? Insta Big Steve? What do you think? Are we going to get a winner? Either way, it's a Falcon Tire win, baby. Teal and blue, one and two. That's how we do. You could use that in the ad, okay? Teal and blue, one and two. That's how we do. Trademark, there we go. It's, it's all you, thank you. I'll, I'll send you my Venmo. All right, speaking of Venmo, talking about getting paid, let's send it Atlanta for potentially the last time here of the evening. Odie Bakshi, South Front, Matt Field, sweating them. Look at this, around that first front clip. Oh man, Matt Field, he is a man possessed. Odie Bakshi feeling all that outside zone one, out to outside zone two. Field taking a shallower line, but look at that field. Oh man, he took a shallower line. He had a correction, exiting out of the keyhole, and then back up the hill. Woo! Oh, Matt, Matt man. looked, Matt looked like 2020 Matt Field there. He was like, he was, he looked like a Tasmanian Devil, a little blah 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 blah, like like he was going for it when he came <laughs> out of the keyhole. He did have that correction, and then I, I saw the judges kind of like, you know, hand in face and hands. Well, they started even at the beginning of this battle, and now one driver is gonna win here tonight. After a crazy one more time, we find ourselves here with Odie going deep into outside zone two. Matt Field sticking to him on the door, transitioning back around. There's that flub that he makes on the transition, leaving the keyhole. Odie trying to stretch out his lead and gapping Matt Field towards the end. There it is again. You can see he got a little unstuck as he was just in the wrong position on the track. Odie firing through that last inside clip. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a battle here on our hands. Here's the FPV coming down. Excessive speeds, mid 90 sometimes from these guys flying into that first corner. And you can see right there, Field comes off that first outside zone a little bit early, doesn't follow Odie all the way out to the second. He's keeping the proximity there and here. This is where he makes that mistake. Look at the front wheels. That was quite a bit of time to be straight with those front wheels when you're drifting. And we saw a pretty solid shot of it there from the FPV drone, which is uh, not the kind of evidence you want if you're looking to take the win here. If we have a winner, we'll bring them down. If you see the scorecard go up, you know what that means. <laughs> you ready to do your? You ready to do your thing? This will be the first time. What's my thing? You know. Oh. Hey, in third place, this guy. Hey. Oh I'll yeah. Oh, if, why? Why do you downplay, <laughs> dude? Obviously, you don't like it, Ryan. <laughs> you ready to do your thing, Ryan? You ready to hate, Ryan? Oh man. Whew. All right. I I am ready to do my thing. I am ready to do my thing. I'm 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 excited. Hey, Atlanta, did you guys have fun tonight? Make some noise. Boy. Oh, come on, yeah. come on. Atlanta, on three, yell send it for me, okay? Because we didn't, we didn't do that because I got a little overzealous talking about Waffle House. A little hungry over here. So on three, I need you to yell send it as loud as possible, okay? One, two, three. 
Yo, thank you guys. Thank you, Atlanta, so much for coming out here and joining us, sticking around, hard charging, hard parting. Here's our BC Racing Custom Coilover side-by-side -side instant replay ride. Well, what do you guys at home think? Is it Odie Bakhtis or Matt Field? We find ourselves here after a really crazy one more time battle where it looked like Matt Field had it in the bag. Obviously, the car was not fully functional. He got it incomplete in his chase. The judges had no choice but to go one more time, and so we do it again. Odie, Sans, quite a few parts on the vehicle. Still looks like he is on point and charging, and it looks like we do have a result, so we are going to bring the drivers down. We know who third place is. All right, so we do have a winner, as Ryan just stated. We'll bring him over there. We'll bring him right here in the horseshoe. We know third place, but who gets the win here in Atlanta? Oh, man, what a weekend. What a week. Yo, so, so awesome to just think about, you know, what, what we've all endured, you know, as far as the home life, as far as, you know, the vehicles and, and watching everything from a distance. It's great to be next to you. It's so awesome. I it's like so awesome. it, it. It's great. It's, it's absolutely insane. A, a, a smidget of normality and everything that's crazy is going on. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's great. I'm looking forward to Orlando. I've done a couple events out there in Florida with, uh, with Cletus McFarland. Shout out to uh, Hell Yeah Brother. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. As uh, Florida will be awesome. Orlando Speed World in just a couple weeks. If you're here in the building, join us at the podium. But join us again, Scorched. Here are our three drivers. And one will be crowned the winner of Atlanta. We talked about, you know, and there it is, some celebratory donuts. go those three vehicles coming up to the infamous horseshoe and there he is your defending champion Vaughn Gittin Jr. got that third place podium you're defending a two-time champion stepping outside of his vehicle a great place to be given just the fierce competition an awesome display of horsepower Make some noise for your third place finisher here at round one of the Formula Drift Pro Championship Royal Purple Road to the Championship presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Third place, Vaughn Gittin Jr. All right, and now your winner here at round one where it all began in 2004, celebrating 18 years of Formula Drift after 700 plus days of not being back here at this iconic track. It feels good, Atlanta. Make some noise for all our drivers. It's a win-win for everybody, but it's a win one and two for the teal and blue. That's how we do. Your winner here at Road Atlanta, Pilots of Falcon Tire Vehicle, has a V8 under the hood, is one of two frenemies, and the winner is unanimous, Odie Bakshis. Odie Bakshis gets the win, and Matt Field gets second place. A Falcon Tire one and two, Odie Bakshis in the Falcon Tires, Field Suspension, S15 gets the win. Matt Field, your number one qualifier, Comes up just a bit short, gets second place in that Falcon Tires Drift Cave Corvette. Vaughn Gittin Jr. rounds out the podium with that Monster Energy Nitto Tire Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D. Lorette Nickel is down there. She is going to wrap out with Odie Bakshis. Lorette, 
Odie, congratulations. Your first win of 2021. Amazing round number one. Man, when you were lining up on that hill with Matt Field, what was going through your mind? You know, I was uh, honestly, I'd say I was too excited. We run together all the time and much more uh, tamer cars, not full-blown, you know, pro cars. And I think we just got comfortable. I got comfortable running in demo cars. And when I chased him, uh, I went hard. I, I wanted to go hard for all of you guys, put on a good show. I typically love chasing. And when I get to chase a straight-up driver like Matt, I, I go all in. And yeah, I, I, I believe I overcooked it quite a bit. Uh, I just lay down as good of a run uh, on the, you know, other battle. Honestly, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm going to think to myself that I, I pushed Matt's car pretty hard to the point where he had trouble making the second run. So it's kind of a bittersweet. Um, Matt was killing it. And uh, it was a really, really fun event. I really just wish that we didn't have to uh, bump into each other. I wish that I didn't have to run into him and uh, run cleaner. but. The car's batched up overall. Uh, thank you so much for my team for keeping that thing going. We got hit over and over again, and I can't believe it's still running. It might not actually run very well after this. We're going to have to put in a lot of work. But uh, hats off to uh, Formula Drift for putting on a great event, and thank you for letting us play out here. Odie Bakchis, congratulations. Round number one win. Congrat Jared. Yeah, thank you, Lorette. Thank you so much. I'm